bitch. I don't um death row, death row looking like a young Suge Knight. <clears throat> Call me Marion, bitch. <laughs> Marion the barbarian. <laughs> And was uh, so this is the episode. So this is gonna be the episode where shit just goes completely left all night. Um, if y'all have never seen this before, uh, this is the pregame. This is where we just be chilling, talking shit. Niggas be grinding the weed. Niggas be uh getting their libation and whatnot together. So if you happen to be, you know, chilling in your car, chilling in your crib, hanging with your folk, this will be the time when you should start getting your things prepared, get your drink. Get your cup, you feel me? Get your libation, whatever your vice of choice is, you know. No judgment. Roll that shit. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, get your I'm shit together right and go ahead and get on the partner's level because it's going to be one of them ones. I can feel it. And uh, from, yeah, I'm going to tell you, I don't know what everybody else will be on, but hopefully everybody else is as passionate tonight uh, as I'm feeling because I'm a. Uh, I'm faded and I'm feeling X rated. And it's not Mr. Nasty time, but it is Mr. <laughs> I'm about to say the wildest shit ever time because I don't have no filter. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, my G's. My queens. What's up, guys? Welcome to the motherfucking partners. It's the show with three friends. We separated by distance. We connected by brotherhood. And we have weekly conversations that you can always join in on. And as always, I'm one third of the partners. I'm Tiz. And I'm along with. Those are the partners. Padawan here. Uh, yeah. And I just came back uh, from random <clears throat> adventure. And um, I'm along with. <clears throat> that nigga just finished sucking some titties. Well, this is face to the place. And I'm in this race. <laughs> What's going on, John? About me. Ah! Yo, what the fuck? Okay. Well, good evening, everybody. Well, this, this is where we're going to start then. That's he, what said he, wanna, he said he was going to be on one tonight. <laughs> Ooh. And the sad part about it is that is a statement that has a, about a 65 to 70% chance of being completely factual. At any moment, you might have said it. Um, so yeah, how y'all doing this week, man? What's been going on with y'all? It's been a wild week, man. This it's definitely been a wild week. Um, I'm trying to re-energize myself because it's been hectic and whatnot. Uh, your boy just came back from Miami Beach for the first time. Hey, nice. To, always good to travel. I'm glad you're getting to see mm -hmm. more of the country. Yeah, it is. It's, it is nice. It is nice. And that down there is nice. It's you know, a lot of ting tings. You know what, though? It's a lot like land wise. It's a lot more compact than I expected. Like, oh, yeah. No, it's not huge. It's just mm. a lot going on there. Yeah. It's and like, very. Even the, um, Act, it's active, but it's not uh, necessarily voluminous. Yeah, know? it's like even the even like the um, like the houses and the buildings. It's like I be look, I'll, I'm looking at everything, and I'm like, if it doesn't have that eighty, got a kind of man at game at the eighties club Miami Vice feel that I don't think Miami ever going to get rid of because the architecture is. Just the way they do stuff is just cool. It just looks cool. But it's like, it made me feel like everybody in Miami is short because it's like all the buildings, like all the houses is like low to the ground. All the, it's like everything is just short. It seems like everything's just really low to the ground. I don't know. It's one of the weird options. It's, 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 what'd you say, Face? The soil ain't shit. Is it the soil? You can't build. You can't build real heavy structures on like. Yeah, they look like. 
That's they true. low level. You feel me? Like I don't know the correct term for it. I ain't going. I ain't trying to think of it right now. I know it because I'm educated. They close to sea level. They close to sea level. Close to sea level, and a lot of their soil is saturated because it's a lot of swamp land and like yeah. ocean beach land. So like, you build some heavy shit, your shit gonna sink Man. at a certain point. Yeah. Or Boom. it's gonna be, or you gonna, or you gonna have to. It's gonna cost more and to build a the type of foundation it takes to support it. It 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 reminds me. Boom. But also, or in other words, also, like I said. They throw a lay shit. The sewers? Basically. The soil. Yeah, the soil. Yeah. Soil. Soil. Oh. I was about to say that. I was about to no, say that. No, what the hell? Don't nobody yeah. give a damn about the sewers. The sewers got gators in them and snakes. Don't nobody give a damn about the sewers. That sewers is trash. Couple of crap. But that ain't what he was talking about, you know. Yeah, the soil ain't shit. The sewers ain't shit either. But you know, it's just a bunch of sh ain't shit shit down in Florida. That's why they act a fool. But I'm also having. I'm also positive another theory on why them on why them houses so short. Mm -hmm. You don't need a tall house to go to sleep in or fuck in. If you live in Miami, that means you got great weather with a bunch of great party scenes and culture. And you got a bunch of different places that you could go to have a good time and enjoy yourself yeah. outside. And the weather's great to go outside in. The fuck you in the house for? Them niggas be like, that's man, true. hey, I just need something that I can actually lay down in. I can crawl into the bed. That's but that's I need true. to be up. I need to be standing up out here in these streets. God damn it. Niggas in Miami be outside. Yeah, they be, do. That's why me... anybody from Florida, them niggas don't wear no shirts. Ever. Because they grew up just, nope, we outside. Saltfish, mm -hmm. Aki, and goddamn uh, whatever Haitians eat and whatever Cubans eat and all that shit just mixed together and them niggas be just outside. Ding, 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 ding. You know what? Dancing and shit. Dancing you know and what? shooting. Just dancing and shooting and selling cocaine. <laughs> the cocaine, yeah, that's <laughs> another thing. <laughs> Lord, it didn't take me like five seconds to go across and see some goddamn cocaine walk across the street. I ain't mad at you. I, I'm not. I'm very much not surprised. Yeah, it ain't take me that long at all, at all. But it, it, it like if Virginia Beach had cocaine money, that's what my that's what Virginia Beach would look like. Miami, that's exactly what it would look like. Pretty much. Not enough cultures. Not enough cultures. That's the key. Not enough. The key to what Miami is, the reason Miami looks like Miami and feels like Miami and moves like Miami is because you got so many different cultures that smash together in a beach and they're all tropical cultures and they all smash together in this one little place. So it's like you got you got African, Caribbean, Latina, Asian, you got some, you know, Caucasian, you got different, you got a whole, you got a whole bunch of shit just, it's like a melting pot. It's kind of like the reason why New York, you can't really match it anywhere else. Mm -hmm. The reason why California, oh. you can't really match anywhere else. Like anywhere, anywhere you get these like specific geographical areas mixed with a, a, like this big conglomeration of a bunch of different cultures in that one spot. It's always gonna come out different because the you can't match the geography with the amount of culture. You might find somewhere else they got the geography, but the cultures ain't the same. Or you might find somewhere else they got the culture, but the geography ain't the same. So it's like it's what make it special. That the uh, the other thing I was going to say about Miami, uh, now that I remember it or whatever, is that you know how you were saying they outside. Mind yeah, you, it's, Friday. it's Friday, right? Outside. I got back Thursday. We went out there Monday. It felt yep. like a Friday. A lot of you not. Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Did you go to Wet Willies? I ain't get to go to Wet Willies. Oh, that's my favorite place to go. When it, like it's like to me, like every time I go to Miami, I want to start there and then I work my way out from there to the bigger shit. But like to me, that's like the <sighs> all right. I'm in Miami now because it's like the only real wet willies where it's like it, it's really be popping in that bitch. Like, mm -hmm. and then you can go out from there and you be done got fucked up and you already got a feel of like the type of shit you about to see and then it just get epic from there. No, nah, it was crazy. I mean, it was uh, it wasn't to the extent as much as I would have want to go on. Right, um, right, 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 right. Business trips um, can be tough like that. It was good and it was good enough. It was good enough for the for me to peak 
see how things are. So when I do make my actual trip, I it was a good it. first time. Well, this yeah. is my thing. When are we going to start doing these road trips? I drive half, you drive half. Let's hit it. I got yeah, a couple of I ideas. Like shit. <laughs> no, I'm saying I'm serious. I got I like I got some ideas, bro. Like, you know, uh Unc live in Florida. So, you know, mm. we can stop there halfway, you know, get it in, and then you know, go from there. But it's it's some options in this thing. Oh yeah, yeah. That's but I definitely got some ideas for even like some cool, some quick day road trips, like go hit this and, and then we come right back this the next day. Type shit. That work. I out shit. Yeah. Have you been to Savannah? Yeah, I've been to Savannah. Okay. And you've been to like the club life in Savannah, like the nighttime when I, you go to like bar hopping and all that shit. I like I was like visiting for like a second. It was either like visiting family or <laughs> no. When I say have you gone to these places, I mean have you actually experienced like the Nah, the life, the the city life of those places. Not like have you gone and just been there? Like, like I had been to Atlanta a couple of times, right? But then when you come to Atlanta, it's different. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So it's like I had been to Atlanta, but it won't like we was in Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta. We was we didn't do the all the Atlanta things. We were just in the we were in the location. And it's okay. different when yeah. you do the things of the place, like because then you actually like experience the culture there. It's like, it's like going to Vegas and you stay at your people's crib the whole time, and mm. then the next time you go to Vegas, you go to the strip. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. One of them, you you were in Vegas both times, but one of them you actually lived Vegas. One of them you were in Vegas. So what I'm, yeah. so that's what I'm saying. I want you to live it. Like I got a couple of spots that, yeah, 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 my nigga. That work. That work. Savannah ain't that far. It ain't nothing but like maybe a two hour, three hour trip, basically. Uh, something like Probably that. Probably three hour, three hour. Um, two and a half. Was, depending yeah. on how we drive and will we and how many times we stop or if we stop and all that shit. But it's not a bad drive. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's the type of joint like you sleep like you 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 like so. What we would do is like that Friday night or something, like niggas get a lot of good rest. The Saturday morning, we drive up hella early. So we'll leave from down here like maybe nine, 10, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Get a air, get, get, get some type of a spot to like so we could change clothes or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, yeah, uh, so yeah, so you put your shit there and then you just go. And then we would bar hop on all of the day spots, right? It's like a little promenade. We'll bar hop like maybe one to four, five o'clock, six o'clock. Mm -hmm. Then you get dinner and shit, you chill. And then you go back out and then like nine, 10 o'clock, you start the night pub crawl where you start hitting all of the night spots and you start on one part of the city and you ride around. We might hop on the little the little booze jump where you where you be drinking and riding the little bike, the big bike thing with like 20 other people and y'all ride around the city. They show you the tours and all that. You know what I'm saying? Like you do all yeah. of that night shit. You go, you hit the karaoke bars, you hit all of the nightclubs and you just hit from one to the other. And the goal is to get to as many as possible without like <laughs> getting so fucked up. You got to go home. <laughs> yeah. That's but like you got to get idea. a... But, but the goal is, but you got to get a drink at each one, though. So, like, that's what mm. you do on a pub crawl. Like, so you go, you start at one end of whatever, and you drink at the first one. You get one drink, whatever that is. And you experience whatever well, it is there. You might, you might, you might listen to a song, and then you go to the next one, and then you get another drink. And then you might dance with somebody. You might, you know, have a little club vibe for about 10 to 20 minutes. You might eat a little something real quick, and then you go to the next joint, and you get another drink. And then you and you just keep going to the next joint and get another drink until you, yeah, until you gotta go Can't home. Do it yeah, mm -hmm. until you fall in yeah, some pussy. Yeah. That's how I actually got to know Atlanta. That's how I found MJQs because when we first moved down here, we used to hang out with a crew, and that's what we would do. We would like start at one club, and for some reason, we would get fucked up there. We would all get separated. I would end up hanging with some random Asians. And then I would be back 
And then we would end up in the car and then we end up in the next club. And then we would get fucked up there. And then we would go to the next bar. And then there'd be a different vibe there. And then we go to the next joint. And then for some reason we'd end up at MJQ. And that would be like the culminating spot of like, all right, let's get it in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it was like, yeah. Should be cool. Yeah, we get a drink pub crop. What y'all think, Pod Squad? Y'all got a place that y'all want us to come through on our um Pod Squad World Tour? And we will do a pub crawl and, and record that shit. I'll remember to record for some shit like that. I'll record that because that shit mm-hmm. gonna be funny as fuck. Because watch what watch, yo y'all ain't see Twisted Pat. It is a hilarious it. evening. It is funny. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny. You hear her face laughing like yo. Know, it is one of the coolest, <laughs> like hilarious, Faces most random. You never know what's gonna happen. Happens. Experiences. So yeah, he the fucking catalyst that shit. He the one that fucking encouraged Twisted Pack. He did start it. He did yeah. start it. Yes, I did. I, 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 I get motherfuckers fucked up. Shit. Hey, hey, face. What I want you to know, I made yeah. sure that while you were going, I I did continue your legacy. I made sure I ke- I kept them fucked up until you Thank got you. back. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate I, it. I appreciate I was, it. I was like, I was, I was like, let me come fill this void. <laughs> Uh, between I know face gonna end up back down here anyway, so let me go ahead. Hey, hey, Pat, it's just me and you, my nigga. Let's go ride out. I got the drinks and all that, or whatever other libations you need. You got the car. Let's go. We out. We about to see the world, and we did a bunch of ignorance. Yeah, right. <laughs> Pat. I'm gonna ask you a question offline, and you gonna laugh when I ask you. I'm gonna see if you. I'm gonna see how much you remember from back in these wild days. I don't want to ask you. On. Hold on, uh, okay, no, let me see one. this. I got a question. To no, ask hold on. Do you remember? Hold on, hold on. For, for that, do you remember the hammerhead white girl? It sounds crazy, but it makes I, sense if you were there. Do you I know who I'm talking white, about? I remember hammerheads. White girl. Me. Mm. Okay, you don't. Okay, uh, go ahead. Okay, good. Go ahead then. Now, what were you going to ask me? Oh, God. Oh, 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 yeah. Do uh, I need to edit remember? this out? Nah, you don't. <laughs> I don't remember, so I don't really care. <laughs> oh, shit. What you about to ask me? Uh, what you saying, oh, shit, that kind of makes me worry. But anyway, um, Remember uh, a couple of weeks, well, like a week ago, uh, we went to Walgreens and they're like, you a dumb ass bitch. Oh, shit. <laughs> Stupid ass bitch. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to tell you, man, and I tweeted it, but I, I, I don't mind saying it again on the pod because that is one of the best experiences ever. So, like, I love the randomness of life and just humans. And there's nothing more satisfying than walking into a Walgreens at like one something, two in the morning and just hearing as soon as you step into the automatic doors, (laughs) stupid ass bitch out of a female's mouth. I don't know why that was so satisfying, but it's man. That shit was hilarious. The hilarity. And then the thing is, he kept breaking. He was drunk, so he kept saying, oh, my God, this shit is hilarious, and narrating the problem. And he was like, he was escaping the problem even worse. <laughs> they were right in line behind Pat. <laughs> and he was just going off. And I was like, nigga, you making this situation worse. <laughs> Stop laughing out loud. So a thing people need to know about is if I see some fuckery I usually despise it on one hand but if it makes me laugh I'm going to not be able to stop going in. It's like one of them things like I become fixated on it. I really do believe I have some autism spectrum disorder issues where it's like I just get fixated on because it just becomes a thing. If you've ever seen our episode of you didn't ask us, but where we had the mermaid, you'll see what I'm talking about. Like, I can't stop. Like, it's just like that becomes the thing that is just the best thing ever and the funniest thing. And stupid ass bitch was the most amazing thing at two o'clock <laughs> in the morning when I'm drunk, leaving the club. 
And I don't even know why I was at Walgreens. But <laughs> Walgreens was great. <laughs> Thank you, Walgreens. Oh, we were getting uh we were getting stuff for the club. Thank you, Walgreens. Appreciate you. I was fucked up. It was a good time. Club Walgreens. Good time. Good Shameless plug for Walgreens. Give us money, Walgreens. I just said your name like five times, six times. Give me some money. Give us. All right. Money. Yeah. Um. Face, how your week been? Pat and uh, Glo Globe Trident down in Miami. What you been doing this week, man? Right near the beach. Shit, work. Did a little crazy, yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. Well, that's why I been. Just my You're people, uh, they not certifiable yeah. crazy, but they are crazy. That's basically what I do. But, but the same thing I do inside work, the same thing I do outside work. So deal with crazy motherfuckers all the time. Deal with it. <laughs> the same part no is uh, no crazy. It is. It is. It is. When crazy is crazy does some shit. Mm -hmm. That part. That part. It's easily fucking easy. Well, have y'all have y'all well, both been, had been good so far, man? I think it's money. Same here, man. It's been a lot of work, so I'm definitely on the same page as Face uh, this week. Uh, I didn't have as exciting of a week as Pat, uh, but I definitely uh, made some brisette. Um, got some hit. <laughs> <laughs> so um been a great week. Um but uh when we started the conversation all when we talking about uh just you know enjoying life, the value of life, uh I've been watching a lot of content uh on like the high value man arguments, the the, the arguments between men and women on uh dating, you know, all of these different platforms and podcasts that kind of uh delve into the relationship realm, right? And I noticed that most of them, I would say maybe 90% of those platforms cater to the high value man conversation, right? So we're talking about men that are uh, six feet or above, six figures or above. Um, it's like the six, 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 six figures or above, six feet or above. Uh, and, you know, like these kind of people, like the top 10% of men, the 10% of men can fa can fall into this category, period. They, they, they even have the ability to do so, right? So what made me, as in watching all this content, right, I like a lot of the arguments. I uh, definitely can say that at this point, I definitely see points on both sides or whatever, you know. But I realize that there is a large group of people that never get spoken for in these conversations because they're not high quote unquote high value man. So what about the blue collar dude that falls into the 90 to 95 percent? The guy that may work as a plumber, uh um a male nurse, um uh a paralegal, um a policeman, a fireman, uh uh veterinary uh veterinarian's assistant uh a phlebotomist, you know, somebody who like they make okay money, but it's not six figures. You know what I mean? W what are the rules that apply for them? What and the women who date them? Like, so all right, you can apply these rules to the high value people. So, but what about everybody else? Because that's what really who everybody like what who's interacting out here. Most people are not making six figures. By statistics, that's just being honest. Most people are not nines and eights. Most people are not above six feet. So for all of us, five, eleven, and down, folk, what are the rules now for us? Like, do we have to apply to I need to take care of all the bills and give you the life you want, and then the woman that I need needs to be completely submissive and she needs to not work and like, how does this work? Or are there different rules? And then that also led me when I was thinking of value to ask the second question is, does a woman's value truly drop over time? They often say women's value go down over time from the time they're 18 to end of life and men's value start to go up. 
um, with both kind of cascading down as they reach, you know, the 65, 70 year old range where they're not as appealing unless they either one of them has a lot of money. So with those two questions, what are the relationship rules for men and 95 percent? and women who date them, and then does a woman's value truly drop over time? Don't know why those two questions popped into my mind after all the content I watched, but I wanted to pose them here. You guys go. I'll let you take that one first, Pat. Oh, man, that is a tough... Those are just tough... Um, <clears throat> To tell you the truth, I don't think... Like how I did... Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, I, I really don't think there's any formal rules for the 95 because there are not that many platforms that express that they want a 95% man. Like, I have, you know, I've delved into that red pill stuff and all that other stuff too. And they mostly talk about how the 95 can become or you know, strive to be one of the 1% or at least have the same values as the 1%. But at, at the end of the day, it looks like the, the, the rules of the 95 is the, whatever rules apply to you that you get from the rules of the high value men are the same rules for you almost. And then like, as far as, um, what was the, se the second question? It was, um, do women value truly depreciate over time? It depends on Wonderful how you look vocabulary. at it. It depends on how you look at it. Because, like, the same way a man's value can depreciate over time, the same way a woman's value can be depreciated over time. It's just that I feel like women have more of a um, magnifying glass put upon them or whatever uh, because they care more about those actual visual va values or, you know, things that um, they just care a bit more in, in general to be vocal about it. Um, most men, they don't care too much about if their, how to say, if their value has lowered or whatever um, too much unless it becomes a detriment to their life. And then in that case, majority of the time, uh, 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 or whatever, we're going to do what we need to do to correct it, unless we just one of the motherfuckers that just don't give a fuck about life no more at a certain age. You know what I'm saying? Like, but right. I would say the same, the same way um, a man's value can depreciate over time. The same, I mean, it's just, it's just, how to say, our value depreciate by what we can actually bring to the table compared to others that can bring to the table it seems like with women it seems like it's more like the situations that you have put yourself in throughout your life is what caused your depreciation or whatever like if you you know because some women they can have they can have three children and they could be a freaking model I live with one of them. <laughs> Some women, they can they can have three children and it don't work too well for their body. You know what I'm saying? Like it, then then after that it's like it, it all depends on what you consider the value because if you are a woman that don't really care if you have a man or not, then it really don't matter what if you have three baby daddies, one baby daddy, it doesn't really matter or whatever. But if you are so-called trying to get either a high value man or just a man in general that has the same values and morals as a high value man, he just don't have the resources um, in, in general, then that's when it changes or whatever, because a high value man might not look at, um, a woman that has three kids and three different baby dads or whatever as an asset. They might look at that as, okay, that's just more drama waiting to happen. 
You get what I'm saying? They might, you know, when you have it, if you're going after a man that is one of the one percent, a man that has many resources, a man of resource in general or whatever, he's a person that has his choices because he has so many that's openly coming to him saying, Hey, I'm gonna I wanna be around you. And if you're going after the man that has many options, that depends on I would say it depends on your goal of what your relationship you want depends on how much value you have for real for real because if you want a high value man or whatever and you're in a regular situation like that then you might be looked at less valued as a person that has a regular nine to five that don't have that many options like if you if you are a rich man and you have a whole bunch of options or whatever that person that has a regular nine to five and maybe multiple kids maybe a couple of baby dads or whatever you might not be the first pick but if you around the person that maybe have the same similar situation as you or you know regular job just like you then your value might be a little bit up because now you you you're in the same situation as that person you understand that person's situation so your value might be up. So it all depends on what you're actually going after to me. I know I I kind of like ran it or whatever, but to over explain, but yeah. You, face. you can't look at me like that, Tiz. You be doing that shit too. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, 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 that's, that's how I feel. Well, I'll say this. Uh, I do think that there are some rules. I think that, like, so, like, if you got high value people, right, and high value men, and they basically like, okay, you got to be submissive. I think that, like, for a regular nine to five percent, like, if you are a woman that, all right, how do I want to say this? Women numbers are numbers. Statistics say that most women will end up with a man that is in the ninety fifth percentile, as opposed to the the top five percent. That's just what statistics say based off of how many women there are on earth, how many men there are on earth, and how many viable men there are on earth based off viable women, right? So mm -hmm. when we look at this statistics, like, it's really just a bunch of 95 percenters and a bunch of people who want to be with one of them top 5% and who would never get a chance to do so. So let's just be real there. I think when most people just settle in there, they're like, we can actually have a real conversation. But then I do think that there are rules because it's like, if I'm not in the top 5%, right, then that means that me and you need to together now make that top 5%. So no, we don't have to either one of us ever make six figures. But I should be gainfully employed and you should be gainfully employed because the rules are we have to now be partners. There is no I can take care of or you can take care of because neither one of us are there. So it's a we can take care of us. Which means that we should be striving to make the highest, the closest to that six figure mark as we can. So if I can get to 50,000 at some point and you can get to 50,000, then we make it six figures a year. We're both living relatively comfortable compared to the most people in our area. You know what I'm saying? And depending on how many kids we got, we just need to up that by however many 10,000 per kid. You feel me? But we do need to be making above six figures as a, as a household. Because really past that, life is relative. Like you might can get a Bentley and I'm riding an affinity, but we both got nice cars. Like at the end of the day, we, we chilling. Like I, I don't have to really work. For, like I'm, I'm not really sweating any bills. Most of the shit that I want, I can relatively get. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's like a threshold. So I think that like the first key, the first rule got to be like, we got to be partners. We got to work together. Like we got to be equally yoked. Like if, I, if I give... Fifty thousand, and you got to give fifty thousand. It ain't no I give fifty thousand, and you keep your fifty thousand, and take part of my fifty thousand, and then we got to figure out how to live off that. And no, it also gonna mean that the second rule got to be that men got to lay off of that household chore shit. Like you might have to do some chores. I know you want a woman that just take care of you, but if she got to also work, then it's gonna be hard for her to just 
take care of all the household shit. It's going to have to be like a give and take with like, okay, I got the dishes in the trash and the grass. You might have the the walls and the, the bathrooms and the something else and the something else. You know what I mean? The cooking and something else. You know what I mean? But we're going to have to divvy this shit up because uh, neither one of us got all the time in the world to do all this shit effectively. So I think like it's going to have to be some rules, but I, I do think that like you got to kind of just compromise. I, I think it becomes instead of I think basically all that you got to do is shift it from if you were okay, if you are high value man, you take on all of the financial responsibilities, you take on all the household responsibility. That's basically usually how the dynamic is desired, right? In a 95% relationship or just a regular value relationship, I guess they want to call it. The only thing that shifts is you take all of them values, but you just divvy them up. So all of the shit she was doing, you take half of that and give it to the man. All of the shit he was doing, you take half of that and give it to her. And they figure out how they want to make that half look so that they all, you know, it fit their skills and strings or whatever. But you just divvy that shit up. So it's just it's the same buckets that need to be filled. Oh, it's the same shit that need to be done. And then as far as does a woman's value truly drop over time? Yes. Uh-huh. Cause I don't mean no harm. Even people who like cougars, right? The younger cougar gonna get more attention. So if you a seventy year old cougar, I'm sorry, but the fifty year old cougar got tr gonna trump you. That's true. Cause she's still gonna look better. And at the end of the day, men are visual. <laughs> at the end of the day, even when the lights go off, I don't want to think of you as something that my niggas will play you as. It's all about status. And I don't like this nigga. I ain't going to even front. I don't really respect kind of some of the shit that he does on the underside of things. But the nigga Andrew Tate said, pretty much men are based off status. It ain't really... That necessarily is. how good you look so much as is more of how good do my niggas think you look? How great do my niggas think you are? How do other men and other people of status, how do other rich people, how do other people, if I bring you in a room with my business partners, are they impressed that I got you for some reason? Do you do something that make them be like, damn, I want a wife like that? Damn, she do all that? Hey, babe, why you don't be doing that shit at home? Like, we want them effects. Or for you to... What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Face? No, it ain't me. Pat? Oh, I'm on a whole different device. No headphones at all. <laughs> hey, man, get that shit together, man. I know. Yeah, it's shit's in and out. No, nah, I don't want to I don't want to know. I want... No, no, nigga. It's some squeak shit. Like some... Eek, 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 eek. I don't know. I don't know that that's me though. It ain't me though. Cause I um I got that I got that flawless Wi Fi. Y'all y'all know what I'm at. <laughs> I got all the good Wi Fi over here. It ain't me, buddy. Every connection is crystal clear, buddy. Mm. Uh, but uh, I would just say. Oh, men like status and you don't get no status from having an ugly woman from having a woman that is that is seen as worn out or is no longer able to provide kids or that is no longer able to you know drop down and get her eagle on better than the other wives or, or who is better or who don't cook like at the end of the day, the older a woman gets, if they if they, if they don't have certain skills, they value drop. Now, if they got certain skills, they can kind of hold their value for a minute. But it's still going to drop because at the end of the day, everybody value drop. Men, like men, so this, this is how it goes. This hand is women. This hand is men. It kind of goes like this. Women start here. Men start here. We kind of go like this. And then we come here, and then we both just kind of drop. You feel me? It's like, at the end of the day, at some point, we all going to go down in value. But the, the thing that can make us still get the other sex is just having certain skills. Like, know how to talk to people. That's a conversation game with you. Mm -hmm. don't, be a, don't be a verified hoe. 
You might be the holiest of hoes, but if don't nobody know you the hold, and then when that nigga take you out, he ain't got to be embarrassed and his status don't drop by being with you. It don't make him look like he's something else. Even if y'all got real love, it's more about the perception of things. He don't want to go in a room every damn time and had to deal with. Damn, I fucked shit out that bit. Remember we ran the train on that bit? Remember we did that? You, He don't want you to be the nasty, the nasty bitch in everybody fantasy. You can't be that. Now, if nobody knows, and you have found some way to be the, the hoe that be that done found a way to like do it all incognito, then damn it, <coughs> you can win. But most women sh don't don't know how to shut the fuck up. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let the face talk, cause I'm about to go off and <laughs> get us canceled. <laughs> go ahead, face. Yeah, yeah, you are. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't though. Go ahead, face. Maybe face is not here. Okay. So um <laughs> Okay, he is so, here. All right. Oh yeah. So <laughs> Do women lose value? I say, is I, I I agree with you. I say, yeah, everybody loses value because as with everything, only certain things appreciate value, and humans ain't one of those things. So, yeah, <clears throat> with age, we all appreciate what value. The younger versions, <clears throat> excuse me, the younger versions are always looked at as. New and brand new. Everyone I wants to get that that new version, the new human version. Even once it becomes legal, um, rather be man or woman. Uh, now, far as how the normal people, I'm going to do, the normal people do it. Um, yeah, it falls back to that the basic fifty fifty. Um, how value I see it as more of a like we like we said, it, it's not too symbiotic. Both people aren't really truly benefiting. Um, if it's a high value man and a woman who attains to get that, nine times out of ten, to me, she's not going to be on the same level as that high value man she's seeking. He, uh, he's always going to be what on some higher level than her that she's looking for someone to upgrade her. Um, so that's not truly symbiotic. She's going to be feeding off of that more, or whatever he can bring to her. Um, in regular relationships, I see it as two people come together. They realize what both they both have, and they're trying to put both what they can get together together to get more. Well, on the other side, you got to do a lot of money. Who want the girl? You may look good, I just want his ass. You see me with a lot of money, you think you can upgrade yourself. So you fall for the game. You don't upgrade yourself. I just add to my body count. The cycle continues. Now, back to the, right. as you say, 95% of people, I'm going to say, because yeah, I don't see it as five, top 5%. Five I see it more as 2% of them high value motherfuckers who are making all these six figure jobs, six figure numbers, and, and do this and do that. Um, Nowadays, motherfuckers don't look, people don't look at people, men, especially you don't look at the men with the regular jobs, the tax paying jobs as good catches anymore. More of these quick dollar people, the, the scammers, the schemers, the the the, the illegal motherfuckers. Wow, no I, hadn't no even it. I hadn't even thought about them being high value, but yeah, they do make six figures. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. You feel me? They're, they're seen as the, the, the ones to get it because they got it now. No one wants to wait. Everything in our society is now, 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 now. Um, patience right. has begun to, to decrease. Attention span has decreased. That's why viewing time on certain things, they've cut it back to certain things because they realize people don't have the patience to sit there and view shit. It's just like real life. People don't have the patience to sit there and work for something and work through something and be with somebody and support somebody to attain a goal. Nah, they want that scam and scamming motherfucker who can get it right now. Boom, I got it now. We can go spend it. Boom. But what about tomorrow? There's no, there's no certainty with those. No certainty. 
Because at the end of the day, you living on a living on a whim when you scheming and scam. Yeah, we've lost. You ain't lying we, we, it, it, it's it's a lot of stuff that's been lost, and not even lost in translation, just lost in society as stuff has progressed. It's not even just technology; it's just a bunch of bullshit has progressed and and, and heightened. Where people think that's that's the it factor, or that's the that's the cool thing to do. Wayne said it best, little Wayne. That fast money don't last too long. You got to pace it. Um, four hundred one ks, some type of retirement plan, some a plan, something that is attainable. Those are yeah. good qualities. Those are good qualities that are seen as bad now. Um. I hear on a lot of content. I don't want no nigga working a nine to five. What can he do with me? Why are you always looking for someone to do something for you? You know what? I love that point right there. Can can I just and it, okay? Can I piggyback on that piece right there? Yes, my, indeed. My, my my question is like, what? All right, in a relationship, right? When did it become like a dependency thing where I got to do for you or you got to do for me? Like, all right. So I know it's symbiotic, right? So where we provide, like we, we end up enhancing something, but that shit should come naturally. It shouldn't come like where I'm looking for you to clean my house or you're looking for me to pay your bills. It should be like, we both do that for ourselves and we partner up and be like, all right, I got this part for us and you got this part for us and we just do that. But it shouldn't be no like, like I hate the way people look at just relationships. They look at it as like, you know, you got to take me on trip. Why? Why can't y'all go on trip? Save up together and go if it's that damn deep if you really want to go. I got take you somewhere. Or you just go on your fucking home you before you get in a relationship. But like, don't stress, like to me, like that ruins the the part about relationships, because then you don't actually be trying to get to know the person. You be trying to get to know their ability to provide something for you. Know. And then you miss there out you know. on the actual fun of, like to me, like I'm a completely independent person. I would rather be homeless and you be rich and we still be vibing. And I you don't do nothing for me. I don't need to, I don't need to come over to your crib. We can meet at a hotel. I'll provide my my portion of the hotel bill or whatever. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like we can go have these on everything. But I'd rather just meet you and just chill with you than be all stressed the fuck out. And, and we, uh, you looking for how, what, what kind of bag I can provide, and I'm looking for what kind of home you can make. Bitch, I got a home. I'm good. I'm comfortable. I don't need you to do anything. I just need you to be there and hang out with me, and we actually enjoy being around. Let's just enjoy each other. Do we actually like each other? <laughs> Yeah, we like all the other shit, but can we sit down and just chill and we actually not get on each other's nerves every time? The world, the world has gotten so materialistic that they think that transactions are a relationship. Mm hmm. Motherfuckers ain't, ain't, ain't even got it in their head to realize can you fly me out? Can you buy me this? This is material prostitution. Well, see, that's the thing. People forget this. Relationships are transactional, right? Because at, at some point, I'm giving you my time and energy and emotion, and you're giving yours back to me, hopefully, right? That's the goal. I'm investing mine. You're investing yours. Now, how I show you that time, energy, and attention may manifest in me buying you dinner so that you can then show me your time and attention by giving me draws. But at the no, you see what I'm saying? But you see what I'm saying? I'm not saying that, like, literally, but, like, as in the way society rolls, you feel me? Like, that's the general <laughs> gist. Like, men put out money nah, and all of that stuff to try to get uh, some ass, and then the woman has control of whether or not sex happens. So then they give their time and attention by giving out physical uh, gifts and things of the household. So, like, it's, it's a give and a take, but the thing is... When you giving and taking, it got to be based off of what resources you bring. In. If all I have to provide is dick, I cannot go into a relationship with a woman who has all of the financial and physical resources talking about, 
oh yeah, well we doing this. No, I might have to succeed some of the financial power to then take some of the home power. Well, this ain't going on in this house because I'm in here. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I'm still able to assert my manhood and still run whatever, but there's certain parts that I may have to see. Like it has to be a compromise. It has to be all right. You take this part, and I take this part, and then we work together and we make this happen. So, like, I think it's uh, yeah, that to be a beneficial give and take, both ends. Yeah, I just think that yeah. They, the word focus so much on the financial but it don't gotta be money transaction part of it that that's Preach. where it gets to the point where they just you know when everything in media and and you know how i am about media when everything in media is trend is showing you get money get money transactions what you're going to get out of me you know and this i would say the toxic toxic individuality or whatever where it's focused on me, 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 what you're going to do for me instead of, well, we're going to do for us and whatnot. And okay. when you're brought up with that, you know what I'm saying? Let's play yeah. conspiracy yeah. theorists. Hmm? Yep. So let's I play mean, conspiracy theorists. Come on. Let's play okay. The media keeps putting this type of shit out. You feel me? Right. There's no substantial right. relationship being made off this. There's no substantial families being made off this. Is this right. all a part of all a part of the bigger conspiracy to further destroy the family structure of the two parent household? See, I don't think it's a conspiracy because a conspiracy is something that's kind of done in the dark that affects us in the light. You feel me? I think it's a blatant attack. Like we've been under this type of sh shit since the Willie Lynch letter. It's just expanded to now affect all of society because as everything black mm -hmm. does it ends up going into everyday culture so like when you look at what's happening like it's just a basic breakdown you you get the women overly sexualized you get the mm -hmm. women disliking their men or putting their men down and cuck holding their men and then you get a, a generation of men that are either overly aggressive or they are underly aggressive, so now they are submissive and completely cuckolded. So now you get two, you get these dynamics that you can easily control. You can play them off of each other. You can make them dislike each other. You can make them fight each other. So now while mm -hmm. they're distracted with that, whatever else you want to do, you can do. You feel me? And that's been a power structure tactic for years. It's play both in play both sides against each other and then you collect the, the spoils of war. That's that shit going back to the art of war back to like this shit go back thousands of years. It's a military strategy so like at the end of the day it ain't no conspiracy face. That shit is just that's a blatant attack. You are absolutely right. It ain't even got to go to no subversive shit. That shit is just nope. Right out in the open blatant. Yep. They are finding any way to make us attack each other. They bring the LGBT into it because then that gets the people that are already happy in life and they in relationships. They give them something to go against. They they they, they bring the race up all the time because that keeps that already generational thing going. Like they 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 want as many different fronts of us, the general population, just kind of at odds, and, so and that add this the minority can continue to win. Like, even if you look at the dating game, the more high value talk and the more argument of men against women goes on, the more the top 5% of men win. Because they sit back and they just get glorified while every other group at some point gets demonized. So they still come out in the wash like the group that, hey, we well, still want to get that. So they still win. They still that their life doesn't change at all. But everybody else is in turmoil, and they still get to be, reap all the benefits because now it's less women for the ninety five percent because it's more focus on their group. So now the the dude that was getting the the play that was working at um he might have been working at Walmart distribution making you know twenty five an hour. It it ain't great, but it ain't it ain't damn sure ain't bad. That's some good money. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But it's not what she wants, because now she's fixated on this lifestyle that most people do not live 
in the world. Yeah, this is not a this is a this is a maybe five percent thing in America, but this is a one percent lifestyle worldwide. People are not, not really living like, like, like man. The trips, the trips these women want to go on every weekend are the trips that people save up to to maybe go on two of those in their lifetime if they are really doing good and they might go on one if they're not. And the other trips is just regular trips. Everybody can go, go cross country. You can get on a mega bus. But you feel what I'm saying? So like, it's like when we living in a, 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 a land of extremes and fringe, everything, everything is at the very polar ends of things. It's no, it's no more nuance and gray area. It's just you are either way over here or you're way over here. And and it's just ridiculous. It's not even sustainable. Like, cause at the end of the day, that's not every people's most people are not at either end. Most people are somewhere in the middle, just hanging out. Like, well, what do we do? We lost. We just out here. We outside. Fucker in. What the fuck are we of the world? <clears throat> we are Ten fifty-five, March seventeenth, St. Patrick's Day, y'all. That's the day. I ain't got no green, but I do got a green light up. I don't keep up with that. Hey, hey, I I'm, not, I'm, to, I'm not that culture. I just happen to have a green lighter, light green, and I'm smoking green. So yeah, and I'm not Irish, so shit. You got green in your background. Tis. Grass is green. Hey. Twin. When our lighters collide, we is Captain Marijuana. <laughs> hey. Reefer. Reefer, reefer, reefer. Smoke, 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 smoke. That's All right. Um. Uh, but yeah, it's a deal. Um. It's a uh, episode one twenty one. Good and fuckery. I just wanna rock, 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 body of the eye, ah, ah. I just wanna rock, 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 body of the eye, ah, ah. I just wanna. He did the shoulder shit. Oh, no, buddy, uh, uh, uh. What's that? What's that damn? What's that pop lock? Yep. Damn. This ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. Good and fuckery. Good and fuckery. Good and fuckery. Good and fuckery. Ah. Good and fuckery. Come on. Good and fuckery. Oh, yeah. Good at fucking oh, red, yeah. Y'all, y'all saw the uh, I uh, wanna rock, just wanna rock mashup I did with the Hindu dude. <laughs> no way. <laughs> that I, I did on the what? <laughs> check, check the uh, I did a little reel on our. Uh, Is that what everybody was liking? Okay, so that yeah. must be what everybody was liking. It. Cause I was like, "What the fuck is everybody like it?" But I, I, you know, I'd be out of the social media, man. The social media, it'd be too much. It'd be if it ain't Twitter, man. That should be moving too fast for me, man. It'd be too much going on. And then by the time I catch up to one thing, then something else be to happen. And then you be to sent something else to me. And then it'd be like you be to sent something else. Then you would have posted this. Somebody be like, "Man, that shit." I'd be like, "God damn, man! Do anybody go to sleep on here? Ain't nobody got no job. How the hell is everybody posting all this shit so fast?" Like my Apple Watch literally be going, be be like burning battery at work, off of just Instagram posts. Somebody has liked your reel. Somebody is now your friend. Somebody has DM'd. Somebody has liked your reel. Somebody has liked your reel. Somebody has DM'd. Somebody is now your friend. Like God damn. Hey, hey everybody. I mean, I like the engagement. Don't get me wrong, but it'd be exhausting. I don't see how you do that shit. I'm glad I ain't the social media guy. Oh Lord, that's your tyrant. Nigga, I'm tired. Just think about that shit right now. I don't know how the fuck Pat do that shit every week. Nigga, how the fuck do you deal with this social media shit? Yeah. Right. 
I know this ain't got to do with good and fuckery, but nigga, how do you do it? Like, I'd be tired as fuck. I'd be like, yo, don't you post another motherfucking thing, you people. Y'all don't want to just marinate on the last thing you read? Mm-hmm. It got to be something else right now? I'm tired. And then you be keeping up with that shit. Well, all right. Well, let me send this, and I'm going to throw this out here. And let me, God damn it. I'm tired. I ain't even read nothing. I'm just looking at my notifications like, God damn. Um, I, it's so a, this it's shit is just video. all day. It's a video game to me now. I ain't have a. I don't have. Now, a see, I like there. video games. I can play video That's games all, right. all day. I can do that. <clears> I'm one of them throat> people. Throat> I don't give a damn. I will play a machine hunter all damn day and be musty as fuck. Like if I post this, <laughs> how many points I get for posting this? And points are like likes and views and shit. That's all. I, that's about it. <laughs> Yo, if anybody ever been a gamer, you know that feeling. <clears throat> you done played, you done been playing 2K all day. It's you and like six of your niggas. You like 13. All y'all at one of your homeboy crib because he got the best <coughs> TV. And he got the and he got the newest system. So y'all in there playing a tournament. And y'all done been playing for like six, seven hours straight. Niggas is sweating. You in somebody's basement because, you know, their parent don't want to really hear all that bullshit. Y'all down there, y'all y'all done got down. You ain't gambling, but if you had money at 13, 14, you would have been. It's that damn serious. Hand sweaty, underarm sweaty, and then somebody in the room is just must as a bitch. And then next thing you know, you realize, no, it's not somebody, it's us. Cause we ain't cause ain't nobody, cause ain't nobody, cause we done been in here since the early morning and we just sweating. Cause it's hot down here. Cause usually, you know, we ain't about to turn on no goddamn special uh shit just because you're all six niggas down here. Uh we we still got bills to pay, motherfucker. You lucky to be in here. That's I got a lot of y'all. For you, ET. I got something for you. But I remember that shit as teenagers, nigga. Nigga be hot as a bitch. But niggas be musty as a bull playing the shit out of them damn games. Beating the fuck out of each other. Mad as hell. Mad as hell when you lose while playing some Tekken. What? Uh, I'm not going to say exactly who's. Um, 13, 14. Playing video games. Yours is all messed up. Somebody else is losing. Hold on, what? <clears throat> Playing the video. 13, 14. NBA Live. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yours all scratched the fuck up, right? You wanted a, not another one. <laughs> but we won't go into the store to get another one. We just went to somebody else's house. <laughs> Damn, <he's> that game. <laughs> Hold on, did they live on the top of a hill? Is that who we talk about? Indeed. Indeed. Was there a lot of was, was a lot of uh, was a lot of outdoor games played at that person's house? Indeed. <laughs> I do remember Indeed. that. Indeed. I know. Oh you. shit. Oh uh-huh. shit. Uh-huh. I definitely I definitely yeah. made an illegal trade. <laughs> That's the fuckery to start it off with. <laughs> Let's go. <sighs> I definitely did that. I was a horrible person. Let's go, Padawan. Oh, man. And you bent all of my basketball cards, even the ones that were worth hundreds and thousands of dollars. <clears throat> so I just want to start there with the fuckery, too. So if we're going to talk about fuckery, I just want to talk about how fucked up of a person we were. And that person was not my best friend. But I am. And I returned to Suge Knight Pose. <laughs> what Pat? Agamemnon. This uh, who Agamemnon, the king? I say nothing about Agamemnon. I said I, I was like, who? Like, I was like Agamemnon. What the fuck, nigga? That nigga took that shit back thousands of years, nigga. Who is that nigga? Biblical. What he got to do with anything? That has nothing to do with anything. That is neither here nor there. The code of Hammurabi. <laughs> what the, what the fuck are you, tigers and Euphrates. 
the cradle of civilization. Nigga, is that Eden? Is that Eden? That is Eden. Babylon. Eve, is that you? <clears throat> Eve, is that you? Put that goddamn apple down. Bitch, we don't even want that fruit. Moses, that shit got that? a snake in it. Moses, why you got that tablet with all the rules up there? <laughs> What's anyway. a tablet? <coughs> the rules and list. <laughs> got that list, this big ass rock with that list up there. Well, that's a big go, rock. Let me go. We're to gonna the make this calf. <laughs> Whatever. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know who put it up there, but yeah, I just saw this too. So rest in peace, Lance Riddick. Uh, or Lance Reddick, um, excuse me, uh, from The Wire, Oz, and many yes. other, other movies on the low and TV shows. Yes. He had the weirdest walk to this day. He is the most, like, it's probably, like, the proper posture that we're supposed to walk with, but it looks so weird when he walked. And if y'all don't know who I'm talking about, it's the black dude from uh, Oz. <laughs> I think he was on Heroin and Oz or something like that weird. And then in, uh, the cop. walk. On the wire, he was the lieutenant. Yeah, he was the uh the head the head cop on the wire. Um but he was a good actor, man. I will give him that. Like he was that he was damn good. So rest in peace. You know, we lost another black man today. Like we keep we keep losing them. They dropping like crazy right now. Like in the past, like when I look at the past four years, we've lost a lot of really good black. Role models and figures that could have been something for the people. You feel me? It, and, and I ain't saying that necessarily he was one, but he definitely was a good actor. And uh, it's just sad that we just keep losing another brother. So yeah, I just wanted to put that on there. That's some fuckery. Yeah, rest in peace to that man there. And thank you for contributing to our everyday lives. Yeah, giving us. I enjoyed the wire and the Oz. They were both uh shows that like really uh like they're they're in my top tens of TV shows. You feel me? So like, <coughs> like the wire is in the top three. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? For me, it go Breaking Bad, The Office, and The Wire. I and then you know what I'm saying, and then Oz is is number seven. So like it, it's like yeah, like Stitman is is definitely a top tier when it comes to just ability. I can't say exposure or nothing like that, but ability. He was he was one of the more. He, well, he, he was a skill actor. I respect those actors that like they just act. They don't do nothing extra. They just act. You just see them in different shows and stuff like that. And you might not even really be thinking about them, but that's what they do or whatever. They can they can be on the show and then they can just have a regular everyday life uh, if they like. You know what I'm saying? You know who two dudes is that's like that? I don't know the dude's name, but he played Martin Luther King in one of them TV shows or one of them movies. And he, uh, he hey, always playing like... No, 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 no. Absolutely not. This dude, he is kind of light skinned, but he's not like super light. But he's like, uh, he usually have like a beard or some kind. He kind of got to push it was, back hair. Uh, was he in Selma? He might have been. I'm a oh damn yo. Because that was the. I wish I. Movie. I wish I could <clears> think of, but but he got like a, a a weird like a voice that's like real measured. But uh, he he's one dude. He just be in everything. He, like he just be popping up and shit, and he's a good actor, but it don't be like no pomp and circumstance behind it. He just pop up, kill a role, and then be out. Mm-hmm. And then another nigga that's like that that been doing it since like we were little kids, and to this day, if he pop up in a movie or a show, like I know his role is about to be executed well. That nigga Courtney B. Vance. If y'all ever heard of that nigga, like uh, light skin dude, he. No, nah, this nigga's brown skin with a mustache. He's been in like uh-huh. every when you was growing up, he was in every black uh-huh. TV show, uh-huh. every black movie. He would always pop up yeah. as an uncle, a cousin, the businessman, 
the bad, like he was just everywhere and he would always kill the role, but you never see him being like the necessarily the leading man. He was always like, he would be like maybe the second lead or the supporting actor or the, the tertiary role or the bad guy that plays off the protagonist, but it was always, but he always crushed it to this day. Was he was in Law and Order Life. for a minute. Uh, um, Preacher's Wife, 61st Street. Yeah, the nigga was a bad motherfucker. When I tell you, like, yeah. Courtney B. Vance to this day is, is, like, one of the better black actors we got. <clears throat> he but he has, he's never been one of them dudes that's been, like, at the forefront or, like, pushed to the moon like he probably could have been. So, like, he, I feel like he fits the bill of what you're talking about. Like, that dude is, like, he crushes everything. He's everywhere, but he ain't he Will Smith. Bottom, yeah, yeah. Like he probably he probably can go to the grocery store, and most people would probably not necessarily like he would have <laughs> his following. Don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. if he just went on a humbug and just was in some chill clothes and just didn't say nothing, unless somebody said something first. Nobody else would probably pay no attention. They'd probably just keep walking past him and not like necessarily be like, oh my God, that's him. Or they might look at him real quick and be like, that nigga look like the dude from Oh yeah. He um 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 he was on love no. Yeah, he won them. Yes. Yes, he won them dudes <clears throat> that like you would see in the supermarket and you know you seen them, but you can't mm -hmm. necessarily put your finger on where you seen them. He'd be like, That's mm -hmm. the dude from all uh, that's the witch of maybe no, no, that ain't him. And you pass that shit off, but it really is him. He you know won. who um I I did consider him like that until he got into a Marvel movie. But it was it's not a big Marvel like um what's that dude? The dude that played Paperboy in um in Atlanta. Uh, ah, I got you. I got you. Uh, I know I don't know his name, but I know who you're talking about. Yup, yup, yup. Uh, paper boy, paper boy. Um, Brian Tyree Hen Henry. Yeah. That's it. Now he he's I don't. Mm, all right. Mm. He, In Atlanta, he's great. Is he? I, is he? I is he Alphabet? I don't know. I don't think he is. He's, but, I can't I figure believe. him out, and, and it's like a weird <laughs> energy that just I don't really know if I like him outside of Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. And I and I don't mean I that in so. a bad way, as opposed to the alphabet. It's just it's a weird energy. It's like he's suppressing something, trying to be, like I would rather if, if he is, I would rather him just act like his full whatever that is. because yeah, so it feels if it, it feels like a struggle, like Paperboy <laughs> felt. I don't know. He did a good job with that, but every other role since then has felt like he's like struggling with something. I, I can't put my finger on it. I'm not trying to be funny, mm -hmm. but it's like I would rather him just be his full self in a role one time, <clears throat> so I can it's see like that. Because I feel like he, I feel like it's something that's ain't right with his spirit. So it like it's been like having him play suppressed. <laughs> Yeah, it's like with me, I almost feel like he might be one of them just extra eclectic. I I, I want to be an actor that can take on any role type person or whatever. But at the same time, he do be having some flamboyant ass roles at at point in time. But it ain't the even a flamboyance. This is my thing. So this is what I'm saying. His acting mm -hmm. outside of Paperboy seems. Like he's struggling with something internally. Mm -hmm. Now I asked if he's alphabet because I've seen him on the red carpet and things. Mm -hmm. But that, but when I'm talking about his roles, what I mean is he. It feels like so. Like you a rapper, so you know, mm -hmm. like if you go to write your best shit ever, right? It's gonna be hard to do that if you got some inner turmoil going on. If you stressed about some, if you like suppressing yeah. something, if you mm -hmm. hold. If you're trying to hold back and still give your best art, there's exactly. something missing. You kind of got to be able to give whatever it is that's you to your art, whether it's drawing, music, rapping, dancing, singing, 
um, juggling, whatever that art is, like you kind of mm. got to be able to give your spirit to it. <clears throat> that's what makes it the art because you're fully expressing yourself. There's something that's holding him back. And I don't know if it was there doing when he was taping Atlanta, but it's there now yeah, or in the roles that I've seen he, outside of Atlanta. There's himself. something there. It's like could be. That could be it. It could be like a spiritual journey, but there's some there that's like, I don't feel comfortable. I want to. I'm trying to project it, but I don't feel it. In Atlanta, yeah. whatever he was, he was going, he's going through outside of that. He was he wasn't going through when he was recording that. Like that role, Either he that just felt or... comfortable. And 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 he and and I don't mean because he was playing straight. I mean because he was just it just like it felt the he was able to play the role and the role felt authentic. Because mm -hmm. that's how I, I don't first known about him. Yeah, when he was in the uh, Celestials, I didn't feel like he felt authentic. It felt weird. E Eternals. 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 Yeah. I'm sorry. No, he's good. He good. The Celestials was in the movie. I know. And I'm sorry for being extra nerdy. So <laughs> no, please correct me. But yeah, you know what I mean? Like that nigga, he, did, he didn't feel it, the performance was different. I, I digress. Yeah. <clears throat> the one... Um, one movie is a Netflix movie that he's in, and it's not because it's a. I like the movie because it's a action movie, or whatever, and mm -hmm. it's he has a funny role in the movie. But I like his role in the movie. Like I like everybody's role in the movie because it's a bit of a twist in it. But it's uh, right. that movie Bullet Train, or whatever. Like it's a. Uh, it's one of those. <clears throat> assassin movies pretty much uh, a bunch of people go after a person with a bounty pretty much but it's it was entertaining his um his role in that movie was actually pretty fucking hilarious too but right i not i just put it out there if you want to watch a quick action movie with that make you laugh a little bit bullet train was okay cool. yeah and they got okay. some good action scenes too like the 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 um the cinematics of it, the way they captured certain scenes or whatever, it almost made me feel like that. Like that movie Wanted. <clears throat> or, um, uh -huh. well, you know, they focus on one thing or whatever, and you don't know why that one thing is important, but uh -huh. you want to find out why it's important or something like that, you know, like it's going to come back later on. It, it almost feels Quentin Tarantino Tino ish, if you mean. You know I love you mean. Quentin Tarantino. That yeah. that has nothing to do with nothing, but his his filmmaking is amazing. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorites. <clears throat> yeah, a little too happy with well, the yeah. N word, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's always it's I, I always, can understand that. Quentin Tarantino movies is always his movies. I really do feel like if if it's anything, when I look at his movies, I'm like, man, this dude went somewhere. He did a lot of coke and wrote something down. And now we got that's possible. Movie. That's possible. Yeah, that is okay. very possible. All his movies is like that. He went on some type of trip or whatever. But being as Hollywood and Hollywood's drug of choice is usually Coke. I went to go with Coke. <laughs> and um, that segues into my second topic on the fuckery. What not? Mm -hmm. Well, um, Tiz, mm -hmm. you are familiar with the movie Cocaine Bear because you went to go see it. Great Cocaine. movie. Great <clears throat> movie. Great movie. I suggest everyone goes to see it. Based on an actual incident with a bear who was on cocaine. Not necessarily. But it didn't happen. No, it, no, <clears throat> the bear didn't really. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't it like this movie. movie. But the but movie it, was amazing. It, but it was a situation. But. Correct. In Columbia. They have a similar um, animal drug problem. Oh, well. Ooh. Columbia. They got plant, cocaine babies? No, they have cocaine hippos. Ooh. That's, that's hard. Because a hippo is the most. But they don't be on land as much. Yeah, but they, be, they, they can be both the water and. They will you know. charge. They will <clears throat> charge your shit, though. And, and they can up and bite the fuck out animal Under humans, which is the top dangerous animal. I can see yeah. that. Yeah. I can see that. Because they ain't scared but, uh, of shit, and they fuck anything up. They'll fuck a gator up. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, crocodile, exactly. I mean. Exactly. They can probably do a quick gator too, man. Cause yeah, but <clears throat> Colombia plans to fly dozens of its cocaine hippos, the descendants of a drug trafficker, public uh, Pablo Escobar, um, private ma mandarin, to new homes in India and Mexico in a bid to control their booming population Hold on. to local government. Hold on. Pablo Escobar's private what? I probably say that all, all No, I want no no, I want you to say it. Private what? <laughs> A man, manager. I don't know, man. I don't know. Menagerie? Menagerie, it's, I think. Yeah, menagerie. I don't know. <laughs> it's his private it's his private it's his private collection of exotic things mm. or animals. Menagerie. But yeah, yeah. Had, um, you know why I learned that word? I'm gonna I'm gonna blow your mind. So like, you know, I used to read the dictionary, right? Uh huh. All right. Now I definitely do not remember this word from when I was reading the dictionary. I learned this word from playing Destiny. That's a video game. And I know this, char this character on there called Callus got a private menagerie, and this is a collection of private like creatures <laughs> and shit that fuck with you and. <laughs> <clears throat> exotic things that he likes. Gold plated shit and all this shit. So that's like, how I got to that word. Oh, yeah. No. God is of the galaxy. Indeed. Indeed. Proceed, my brother. Oh, well, yeah. Um, there are now between 130 and 160 of these hippos that are cocaine. I added that part. According to the Colombian government, and they have spread out as far beyond. Hold on. So they are or are not on co co cocaine? Are these cocaine hippos or not? <laughs> they're, they're, I mean, well, they're cocaine hippos because they're on Escobar's ranch. But they're not on cocaine. They're not really on cocaine. Okay. 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 Because <clears throat> you had me confused. I'm like, oh, so are they, are they high or not? Are these are these hippos running around fucking shit up this, or not? This is a I, you got to remember, I've seen this movie. Cause I'm I'm thinking of 150 hippos just rampaging shit. System, some type of way, maybe indirectly, because that's how hippos sound. They were. Oh, I don't know. That's my hippos. They were Pablo Escobar's personal hippos. So I don't know why nigga wanted and a multiple hippos of that. They never put this in that <laughs> <laughs> They never put this Hippo. in that um, Hippo just come at you with some fucked up teeth. <laughs> <laughs> they teeth already fucked up. That's why they got their fucking that uh bird on the teeth. Now the, Symbiosis. Yeah. Now the bird getting high off of fucking hippo teeth. Cocaine hippo teeth. And I tell you, and I tell you what, and I'm not gonna fuck with that bird or that hippo. That's true. That is true. I know damn well. They I gonna, gonna both. Go. They gonna both bask elegantly in the sun. You be seeing hippos walking around with gator boots on. Gator boots and with the pimp down Gucci suit. Boom, boom, boom. I stay fly. It's all my money. Oh, it is me. Have you ever seen a, <laughs> a hippo? <laughs> turn, around, turn around and let it bite your butt. <laughs> Pause. No, let that hippo bite you, but pause. <laughs> Up and down and up they go. Pause. I got a majority of cocaine. Oh, it's always just pause. <laughs> Very much. Mm -hmm. Very much. <laughs> <clears throat> pause. Well, um, yeah. Since we, uh, well, from one cocaine no, subject to another. Yeah, I'm like, no. 
<laughs> go a ghost submarine. What was found floating with two dead bodies and eighty-seven points? Mm hmm. Eighty-seven points. I thought it was just me. Nope, not just you. So, um, I'll finish this story. There was a ghost submarine found floating with two dead bodies on it and $87.7 million worth of cocaine. Now, that's a lot of keys. Okay, that's some, that's some bricks. All white bricks. Because it ain't broken down in the street turns. That's just wholesale. That's just wholesale prices. Street. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. How did these two niggas die mm -hmm. in this submarine with this? Who killed them? Was doing it, it a, was it doing a plane? It, doing was it a oh, they could overdose. Now there's a lot of that damn coke to transport underwater just by yourself. And if they had some habits, that could have been a possibility. You might be right, face. Mm -hmm. Or oh, a stupid ass is suffocated. <laughs> that that is an option too. Cause uh, I'm trying to use the, I'm trying to use a ghost submarine. Hey man, hey man. So how do these niggas die? That's the question. Me and, me and Face then <clears throat> got to that point. That's 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 the question. I yeah, mean, still trying to figure out how. Turn your, turn your camera. Turn your camera off, bro. We ain't gonna even do this shit no more. All right. Go ahead. All right. Sorry, Pod Squad. Well, <clears throat> So it said, "All right, let's get to the part." Two survivors and uh, two survivors and poor help were also found on the vessel, giving first aid. These per people' poor help state is presumably due to inhalation of toxic fumes caused by fuel problems inside the boat. Captain Christian. Okay, Andres so that's how the two niggas died. Mm-hmm. Um. The roughly 50 foot long submarine was carrying almost 5,800 pounds of cocaine worth 87. God damn. <clears throat> the Navy so said. So that's at least 2,000 keys, at least. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Navy vessel had been bound for the countries in Central America. Um, and that seizure had kept more than six million doses of cocaine off the illegal market. Somebody is pissed. Somebody is pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's mad as fuck. <clears throat> yo, can I take yo, okay. So it's one thing you drop off. Now that gotta be some cartel shit. Or mm -hmm. some like, you know, one of them uh medallions. Cause um mm -hmm. you don't okay. lose that much okay so street value that cocaine is worth hundreds of millions of dollars mm -hmm. if it's worth that much wholesale but you don't lose exactly. damn near a hundred million dollars worth of cocaine and then just eat that and you ain't out there like what the fuck these four niggas at two if them two it's niggas because like like they lucky because them niggas should have been dead them two that made it mm-hmm if they ain't, they will be. Oh, yeah. Somebody's at the hospital right now ready to cut the cord. Mm-hmm. Oh, you oh, thought okay. you had breath, <clears throat> bitch. Uh, no. So, all right. The Columbia, the Columbia Navy. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Last year, the Columbia Navy seized a semi-submersible vessel carrying four tons of cocaine worth about $150 million. And that was four God, tons. Damn. Four tons of cocaine. Mm -hmm. so that's two thousand pounds. So that's about that's about a uh, thousand keys. Twenty nineteen, a submarine carrying twelve thousand pounds of cocaine worth more than one hundred and sixty-five million was seized by the U.S. Coast Guard. Six thousand or some keys. God damn! But and then it's just then, keys to the city. We built this city. Not only that, it's it's the keys that you lost and the transportation. These niggas is the key master 
like on Matrix. It just got the but ring of keys it's... like a janitor. Just but this key upon like, key. Though, That's some cartel like business. submarines, like the military submarines, like you think they are. You know what I'm No, it's probably little like, paddle jaws. Yeah, little submersible shits. You know what I'm saying? But still, you don't eat them losses like that unless you're one of them big cartels or the Medellin's. Like, you ain't eating that. I don't care oh. if you are a kingpin in America. You ain't eating that and just don't feel it. <clears throat> Or have your big meats. You you gonna know that happens. They just stole it. They were trying to get away. Got the beefing over the split. Two of them killed two of them. Some some type of way. And now they just paid on the submarine. And and y'all got it. caught, and now it's public news. And so whoever y'all stole it from didn't know who stole it, <clears throat> but now they do. I was missing like these this many keys. Well, if you already counted as a loss and then you find out how the loss was a loss, then it might be, you know what I'm saying? It might not phase you too much. If you already in your head already. I mean, it's still a loss, but if you already counted or, as a loss, you found out or, about it, it's not. Maybe it's not even a loss. Maybe maybe whoever they got it, the keys from got so many keys, they didn't realize the keys was gone. That's Ooh. true. Oh, that is very true. true. Mm-hmm. Just waiting for a Kevin Gates song to just start coming on in right about now. <laughs> well, it ain't. I ain't got one. Got two phones. <laughs> one for the plug and one for the loop. Well, okay. Um, since, um, yeah, I, I, I figured, like, I just came back from Miami. I might as well have some relatable topics for the fuckery, right? <laughs> right. Whatever. <laughs> so, let me go get back to my normal. Let me, go, let me go get from Miami one back to Padawan and go back to space. Um, <clears throat> so, it was this article. It was this article that uh, says a okay. <laughs> y'all niggas are joking being background. I hate y'all. <laughs> I'm joking you. Face was just laughing. I just I'm like I don't give that shit no credit. That shit was <laughs> Okay. 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 Just go. <laughs> just go. <laughs> I just hate y'all. Anyway, it was a Pentagon official. That suggests that an alien mothership in our solar system could send many probes to Earth. <laughs> but, <laughs> this popped up on news. Oh, okay. No, fuck it. okay, 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 okay. All right, first of all, when you say probe, for some reason, all I ever go back to is one of them early South Park Ooh. episodes when Carmen had the probe <laughs> up his ass. <laughs> Damn, aliens was coming out his butt. <laughs> so if these are them aliens, uh, what up, Car- what up, Eric? Uh, I don't know what to say to this because I, I believe in that UFOs can <clears throat> exist. I don't necessarily know if aliens do, so I, I just want to see them. Like, what, what y'all gonna do? F- let me figure it out. Do I, do I fighting y'all or are we chilling? Make your intentions yeah, well, known well, again. Come on. They said that this uh, uh, actual draft document last week that aliens could be visited our solar system and releasing smaller probes like drones, kind of, um, like missions conducted, um, kind of like missions they con- that NASA conduct when they try to send like uh, like telescopes out in space and put drones out just so they can learn whatever they can learn. And whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the draft re- research report was authored by Sean Kirkpatrick, the director of the Pentagon's All Domain Anomaly R- Resolution Office, and Abraham Loeb, chairman of Harvard University's astronomy department, was released on March 7 and focuses on the physical constraints of unidentified aerial phenomena. Which is pretty much the new name for UFO. <clears throat> Did you say Ariola? No, no, I said Ariel. 
Okay. It's not as the other way. Unidentified. Areola. But not my... Oh, hell no. <laughs> That's how I sound it. Uh, unidentified titty object. Object. Uh, Uto. <laughs> <laughs> titty, 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 titty. <clears throat> oh man. And it's don't get it twisted. I'm an ass man, but I like saying titty. It's a good word. Mm-hmm. I'm ambidextrous. I like both. You know, titty ass. Yeah. Okay, Gambi. <laughs> Congress what is that? Congress tasked NASA to find 90% of all the objects near Earth that are larger than 140 meters in 2005. Rich, rich, ah, flick it, flick it. Oh, let me restart. Which resulted in PanStars telescopes, according to the report. PanStars is just some particular type of telescope or whatever. So with using that report, that's when they start having uh, reports of unidentified aerial phenomena or you know, the UFOs that appear up. Basically, these <laughs> things they see in the area that mm-hmm. they, uh, they just can't un- uh, identify at all from an earthly standpoint. Um, mm-hmm. said three years later, another object was discovered. The um, report noted in 2020, let's see, the report also had, um, let's see, a quant- man, what is this word here? All right. It said the, what is this? The O-Ma-Ma, O-U. O-Ma-Ma. That's a Hawaiian word. Yeah, it's scalp, basically. So for scalp. Yeah, they found this um unidentified in 2017 and they named it the Hawaiian word for scout. Ooh, mau, mau, I guess. And it said it made its closest approach to mm-hmm. Earth. Uh, and it was the meter-sized interstellar meteor. Um, it crashed on Earth and exhibited an uh, identical speed relative to the sun uh, large distance. Anyway, they said with the proper design, it could be like a they have this theory that it could be just like a probe that's like bringing back data or whatever. But they haven't really let's say they haven't really, other than this one occurrence, have found other probes yet, but that's their theory about this one particular unidentified object that they have found. Pretty much. Well, damn. Yeah, that's it. They were supposed, supposed to have came from outside our outside our actual galaxy or whatever they said. Mm-hmm. Damn. X Files. But uh, yeah, that's what's happening in this space. <laughs> We're, we're slowly by the um while you know Colombia is finding ghost submarines and um exporting cocaine hippos, we are slowly getting close to an alien invasion. Meanwhile, the uh, the brothers that um uh, allegedly beat up Jesse Smollett had done a video reenacting the Bubba Ray and Levo. No, the uh, what the Nigerian brothers, what was it Osandario, Osandario brothers, the ones that um, Jesse Smollett hired to uh, beat him up, basically. The big black motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. So they did a video basically describing how they did it. They, <laughs> they basically OJ. They did the OJ Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. Hey, Bim. They yeah. niggas still want they little bit of fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, Bim shit. Bola and Alabinho Alessandro. I have messed. I'm pretty sure I did not say their names right. Uh, claim <laughs> the morning they prepared to allegedly help actor Jesse Smollett stage a racist, homophobic attack against himself. Uh, 2019. He didn't show up on time. That was their first right. We made sure we got there 2 a.m. sharp. We had no phones because he did not want us to bring any phones. <laughs> so 2 a.m. and he was nowhere to be found. So that was one reason they made it real realistic when they tried to beat him up. <laughs> they were mad that he showed up. With. But they go on throughout the video talking about what they did pretty much. I guess trying to get their last little bit of fame. And they also wear very tight shirts on this shirt. Too, it seems like every time they show these when don't they, 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 they have a shirt that's choked, uh, choking or they can't fucking breathe in. Or oh, got this nigga trying to get their areolas to pop through their shirt. We don't need that type of unidentified aerial phenomena at all. Not at all. <laughs> 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 but yep, that is pretty much the end of the fuckery for this week. Yay! <laughs> cocaine, cocaine everywhere, and not a drop to drink. Mm-hmm. That applies to water, but I just I don't know. That's neither here nor there. Anywho, <clears throat> anywho. Winnie the Pooh. Ain't that horror movie coming out soon? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I thought it was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Blood. No, I don't think Come on soon. Cocaine okay, Bear. Yeah. Again, if you haven't seen Cocaine Bear, people, go see it. Also, Cocaine Giraffe coming out soon. Man, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Nigeria is trying to find the export cocaine giraffe. Hell no. And ship them to Zimbabwe. If that shit come out next shit, that's that shit. Watch Who that shit come out next year. Motherfucking snakes on cocaine snakes on this goddamn plane. Now snort your line and get in line. Get out my way. All right. Yes. What do you say? Have you ever seen Black Snake Moan? Yes, I have. With a white girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he he getting nasty. Um. So yeah, face, most definitely face he nasty. <clears throat> face mob disappeared, uh-huh. and I think he's his subject is next. But no, he's right, think... here. Oh, he's, he's right here. Oh, there we go. All right. Yeah, yeah face, right. Right. face me a little bit. So I had asked y'all if y'all had ever seen the movie Black Snake Moan. Yes, yeah, yeah, you did. That's just that. Hilariously, I didn't hear y'all. Yes, you did ask us that. that. You um, definitely asked me that. It was the white girl's idea to watch that show, mm-hmm. too. I bet it was. Now, I got a topic on the docket. And when I wrote it, I was really feeling it. But where I'm at right now. I don't want to take the conversation to that note, so I'm not. So I was watching some other shit today, and well, I was watching a T Pain podcast. I've been, I've been watching that uh, pretty regularly for the past two or three days, binging it just to get a taste of a, a different type of podcast. Um, I like the way it's set up. I like the way he do his thing. Uh, so he got a segment on there called top five where they randomly give each different guest a 
a random different top five for this for them specifically. So I figured I asked y'all some different top five just for y'all for y'all personality and, and just see what y'all top five would be. And feel free to ask me whatever. You feel me? Just some just some old jovial goofy ass shit just to end the show off with. We had a good ass time and I don't want to end it off with nothing too humdrum and serious. You feel me? So Pat, go to you first. Fun. What's your first what's your favorite top five top five comic book characters? Oh, you, me? Oh, okay. Now, top five. Oh, of course, you. Okay. <clears throat> My top five comic book characters is the Joker, Wolverine. Um, I want to, I'm like listening to all of them because I don't want to go through this list and then I'd be pissed off because I didn't include the one I really wanted. But the Joker, Wolverine, I'm going to put Batman in there just because. Mr. Sinister, the way he's being written, is very entertaining. And I want to say, what is my last one? Not five. I wanted Apocalypse. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Those are just my personal Jeez. top five. Mm-hmm. Okay. Top five vacation spots. In the world? In the world, Craig. Top five vacation the, are, spots. Are these ones I've been to or just top. in general? Just best. Uh, how how however you interpret the question. All right. Um Anywhere on the west coast of Africa. Um, let's go Jamaica, specifically the Royalton Resort in Trelawney, Jamaica. Um, let's go vacation spots. Okay, so that's one, two. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go Bermuda. Mm. And let's go Dominican Republic. Mm. Is that four or five? Them Dominican ladies. I think that that's four. four. All right, so the, fifth, so the fifth one is Brazil. Mm, I can see that. Yeah. I can see Brazil. Yeah, 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 yeah. God damn, I can see Brazil. Can you see Brazil? I see Brazil. I see Brazil. <laughs> I see Brazil from far, okay. from far away. I see Brazil. I got a, I got another one for you, then, T. Um, see, remember this. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? <laughs> oh, <laughs> this nigga's fucking wild. <laughs> I don't know what he on, but this nigga just literally looked to the ooh, What, nigga? You might have to tell the story. I'll edit it out because I don't know what the fuck you talking about, nigga. You lost me. Oh. Nigga. Right. I don't know what the fuck that means. That shit sound like some old freaky shit. <laughs> exactly it was. <sighs> Nigga, what? Yeah, exactly it was. That was oh, the yeah, sound you want... that was found somebody was making. Yeah. On a horn or something. At first, then, and then emulated in real life. Where? What, what? What are you talking about, nigga? Just tell the story, cause now I'm lost as fuck, and I'm disgusted, and I'm I'm getting annoyed. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> what's happening? So, so <laughs> what you let, talk- let, let's see if I can piece the story together without using names. It's gonna be all right, all right. so. We was at Old Dominion. Oh lord. Or, 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 or Old Dominion. 
Um, originally, okay. the the I'm video the originally the video was from a teenage years, and it was a cassette. But then at Old Dominion, I forgot I, I forget the young lady's name, but the exact from the tape was emulated from her and you bust out laughing when you came out of the room and you made the same noise that she made and we both remember where it came from. <clears throat> Hold on, what? What? Nigga, whoa, 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 whoa. It's a lot of moving yeah, pieces sir? in that that I've lost on all of yeah. what? Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. So, whoa, whoa. So back to wow, wow, wow. <laughs> all right, so this is what I do know. I do know mm. The cassette you're talking about. I feel like that was like Miss Big Booty Brazil or some weird ass tape or something. Like <laughs> some weird porn tape like that I stole from somebody. I feel I, I think I know that tape. But the and I know the sound. I definitely know the sound comes from a porn. But this situation you're talking about, what? Hold on, what? I came out yeah. the room with a girl talking about ooh, 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 and we both no, you didn't come ooh. out the room. With her, but <laughs> oh, shit, she wow, whatever y'all were doing, what y'all were doing in y'all closed door room, she was emulating that exact sound. So when you came out, <laughs> what? Oh, that's okay. hilarious. I'm bad, I don't remember, but it's hilarious. What? Yeah. That's funny. fucking hilarious. It sounds. It sounds. I hilarious. can't argue it. That's why I'm just trying to get context because I can't argue it. Sa- I did a lot of weird shit in uh, OD- uh, ODU and a lot of. I'm other trying colleges. to remember the name. Was, I'm trying to remember. Oh, the fucking man, name. Wow. Was it somebody I was going with or somebody I was just fucking off? Oh no, it wasn't a rela- It wasn't a relationship. <laughs> Okay, so that might be why I don't remember that well. Because <laughs> I'm like, who? <laughs> who did what with who? I, I did remember, that. I remember that because the scene was, the, the, the shit was funny. I remember because the shit was fucking hilarious. <laughs> I'm trying to think, yo. Damn. So many yeah. that it could be. It's, I, I don't really know who we talk about. Damn, now that's gonna fuck with me until yeah. I figure out who you're talking about. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Next on the that's gonna fuck with me it's like shit. Yeah, we're gonna have that, we're gonna have that cliffhanger for y'all next little week. I'm gonna I'm gonna figure out who the fuck he was talking about. I'm about to go back through like every Instagram post, every Facebook. Every, I'm about to be searching, like, who the fuck is this nigga talking about? Damn, yo. That's funny as fuck, nigga. I want to know. I want to put the face with the with the story now, so I can laugh even harder. <laughs> yeah, I was a nasty nigga back y'all, then, boy. Both of y'all, both y'all two niggas provided me with plenty of laughs and memories. Hey, look so, here, man. I got. I, I'm gonna I'm just put it out here to the podcast, man. I was a whore, a straight up whore of the highest order. Like just, I was a gentleman. I was running, nigga. What? That nigga said he was a gentleman. This from the nigga that was fucking humping a bitch on the floor in front of everybody. It was more like her, you know, influence. <clears throat> bitch, you was with it. She, was, you want, you won't yes, oppose. Man. Yes, you won't push it and push it away. We all know who the gentleman in this group is. We all know the gentleman in this group was. Yeah, talking about a damn gentleman. Yeah, you escorted her ass to the flow. Got that Jesus. pussy up on you. That's what you did. I was yeah, on the gentleman, my I ass, was on my and and you and her both I was happy as fuck. She was but the- you damn sure was with it. You was with it. Gentleman ain't gonna be with it. Gentleman. Oh no! How dare you! Exactly. Man, have some respect. Remember, for vote for Patreon. Nigga, y'all was down there getting raw and rugged in everybody front of everybody. <clears throat> yeah, because we was all humping too. Shit. Yeah, really. Can I? I'm going to tell y'all the best moment 
of my college career, right? And it doesn't have it doesn't involve sex. It does involve precursors to sex, but it doesn't involve sex itself, right? <laughs> and it involves most of the people that I was cool with at ODU. I'm gonna say two words and the name of a song. And if you was there, and if you know, you know. And if you listen to this and you was at ODU and you was there at the house that night, if you know, you know. Wet bar, lovers mm -hmm. and friends. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that one moment is burned into my brain. But if you were there and you were a part of it, you understand exactly what I mean by that phrase. <laughs> when I tell you it was one of the most symbiotic moments in the history of my life, and I think that may be where the burn is. It's like it was such a concophony of things going on at one moment. And everybody being on the same page and just with it. It was just a beautiful moment of like human, just ah, we just all together. Let's just ride this vibe. And won't nobody on ecstasy or no pills or no crazy shit. Nigga was just off the weed and the liquor. And all it took is a bunch of girls. And a bunch of dudes and a bar and the song Lovers and Friends and life got great. And when I say a bar, I mean a bar in somebody's house. I don't mean like a, we went out to a bar. I mean, this was like a house party. But it was an amazing experience. And I, I just, I don't know, but like that is one of them moments that's just like, oh, yep, that is something that I'm never going to forget. Mm. And if you know, you know. A partner's moment with the partners. <laughs> On, only people who know us before we were the partners when we were the buddies would even remotely get that. But it's about a good 75 people. Could be less, could be more. That 100% know exactly what I'm talking about and we're there, and they understand. It was a special night. That was the night of, uh, I'm going to say her name as Damie. <clears throat> when I was supposed to go home, and then I just got kidnapped. <laughs> Based off some shit that I had said like three and a half years ago. That is the weirdest moment ever. So fuck it. I don't mind telling this story. Why are we sitting there talking? So pod squad, if you ever want to get kidnapped, say something three years in advance. So there was this young lady named Damien. Now, when I first saw her, I believe some other dude that was cool with face was talking to her. And at the time, I was visiting. I was visiting ODU, and I was just a visitor, and I had some uh, things happen to me the first night at ODU that just kind of uh, set the tone for the rest of my time there on my visit. And from there, it was just up, and it was stuck <laughs> on the uh, We Out Here game. It was a lot of tears for the streets, okay? Now, and being for the streets, there was this young lady that was talking to a friend of uh, faces and I said well hey I'd like to F that F the, sh F the shit out of that actually is what I said I'd like to fuck the shit out of her that's what I said that's what I said and I said it to one of her friends now at the time she was talking to the dude I was fucking off on a lot of things at the moment there was a lot of things going on I was stuck at ODU. It was a lot. It was a lot going on. But while I was stuck there, it was just a lot going on. All right. So anyway, she didn't really pay me no mind. I paid a lot of other things for mine. Time went on. Now, fast forward a few years. 
I end up going to ODU. Now I'm at ODU full time. And we have our, you know, click and we be throwing parties and whatnot. So the night of the wet bar, lovers and friends. The party done. And you know, as good people that we always are, as hosts, we always stay around to the end, make sure all the money collected, make sure everybody is good, make sure the liquor straight, make sure everybody that got home safe. You know, we don't watch everybody leave. So it's literally like maybe seven people in the house. Two of them are the people who live there. Maybe th four of them are us. So it's me, Chewy, Face, and Pat. All right. Oh, I was. And there. then there's, I was. You might have been. You might have left by then. I don't know. But it was seven people, and I feel okay. No, no, no. The other person was Foos. That was the, that was the four. That was the four. It was Foos. That's who that would have been at that time. I, I. It was Locks, but it was the wrong Locks. It was Foos. You probably had already left. All right, and then because the last person there was like a late a young lady, but I believe she was there for like uh one of the people who lived in the house. All right, now we all about to leave. Everybody, you know, making their calls for the night, about to go to their respective places. You know, we about to load up in face cars and we can go back to the uh, apartment and you know spread out from there. Yeah, you know, we got it's a lot of different places about to go. So as we sit in the crib, I think the last person just left. And then this other person that had already been there comes back. And she's like, I don't know whether she had left some or what. But she was like the sister of everybody, you know. Lachel. <laughs> oh. Lachel. Yeah. So she was like the sister of everybody. Like, you know, that's like everybody's sister. So she come back. She like looking for something. And Lachel got friends, and one of the friends is this young lady from three years ago. Now, mind you, Tiz is, is laid back on the couch, obliterated. Like, it's been one of them nights where, like, so back then, you know, Tiz was a dancer. So I done danced with every girl in the party. They done obliterated my uh, penis region, because if you know about dancing in the early 2000s, it was a lot of hard grinding. Now, mind you, we wore baggy jeans, so I got zipper burned all up and down everything. It's it's not it's not pretty. Like I have been grinded to the high heavens, and I don't want to be grinded no more. Um, so I'm laid out on the couch. I'm fucked up. I'm drunk. I'm high. I'm sitting there. I'm waiting on uh everybody to leave so we can just go ahead and load up in the car. Face about to collect me and uh Chewy and everybody, and we about to go ahead and roll out. And who walks in but this young lady from three years ago? Now Lachel in there looking for whatever she's looking for. And this young lady walks in and literally just starts doing the one thing that I'm not exactly wanting right now, grinding on me. The music's still playing, but ain't nobody actually like really paying no attention to the music. Like at this point, niggas is trying to go home. We just fucked up. Like it's it's the twilight evening. Um, but she and next thing I know, this lady puts me in a car. I don't know if it was against my will or with my will. I just know I end up in a car. And face is talking to me, but I'm so fucked up I can't respond. So this young lady is responding for me. And he's asking me, like, hey, Tiz, so you coming back to the crib? You good? You need a ride? You sure you all right? And this young lady is like, yeah, he good. He coming back to my house. I got him. Don't worry. He'll get back home tomorrow. I got him. And I'm looking at Face, and I don't know what face I was making, but I just know I just couldn't say anything. And he's he asking me smart. questions, but I'm listening. I'm listening to her respond, but I can't say shit. Next thing you know, I get kidnapped. I have no ride home. At this point, I have no cell phone. This is early 2000s. The average person didn't have a cell phone. Like, you had one. You might have got a burner. It might have been a quick jump. But most people ain't just walking around with cell phones like regular. So I'm over this girl's house. She got the phone. And she is... <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> she is railing me. She is. She is disgustingly fucking the shit out of me. Now, mind you, I'm sitting here pissy drunk, so I'm barely able to like. I, like I'm sitting or I'm laying, and she's like kind of propping me up. <laughs> the only thing that's working correctly at this moment is little Ted. Mm-hmm. All right, you understand me? Like it's nothing else that is working properly. Everything else is pretty much just like a GI Joe at this point. You just, it's just posable. I'm just hey, put, put, put me in the position you need. And when I tell you, bondage is unreal. People should not be kidnapped. If you've ever been human trafficked, please see some, say some. If you see a young man getting pulled out of a party by a young lady, see something, say something. Now, I ain't saying I was mad at it. But it happened. Yeah, because to this day, it's top tier. To this day, it's top tier. It's top, it's top seven, top six. I've been kidnapped before. Yeah, that's happened. I tell you what else is funny. The amount of times I've gotten my watches in, whether voluntarily or involuntarily. Because I remember me and Pat used to have uh, some roommates. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. <laughs> I will tell you the creepiest shit ever about this set of roommates, right? You ever go to sleep? Hold on. All right. All right. You ever go to sleep after y'all done had your watches in, and then you wake up, and then you start getting your your thing in again, you you know, you're handling your business again, and then somebody just sitting there staring at you in the darkness like a cat? Mm -hmm. (laughs) That is the creepiest shit. Yeah, me and Jorge used to do that shit. Ever. So, like, I'm sitting there, you know, so the way the beds are set up is like Pat in them bed is at the foot of where I'm at. So, you know, the watch is okay, cool, everybody. Good night, everybody. Everybody go to sleep. So then I wake up and then I'm like, oh, get my diddles in one more time. So we're getting it in. And I look down and I just see like shining like two shining pearls in the in the twilight in the, in the moonlight i'm like what the fuck you know how creepy that is that is some of the sickest shit you like know creepy, it's one man. thing when you know it's one thing when you don't know you, know you feel creepy, violated man. you feel, you feel like that, am I- and you see a cherry of a blunt light up out of the darkness oh Shit, nigga, just sitting there like, ooh, yummy. You my entertainment for the night. I didn't get none, so you it. Damn right. Let me watch. What you gonna do? Hey, put your leg over there. Hey, put her, put her, put her, put her her arm back like that. Yeah, sit her back. Ooh. (laughs) Hell no, nigga. I don't mean the hard. I don't mean the hard. That's some creepy shit. It's what like. Oh, oh, no, 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 nigga. Nigga, JK just light up like he got a cigar. Like, he in the darkness, like, on true lies. Darkness. No, nigga. <clears throat> I, bitch, I ain't Jamie Lee Curtis. Don't be, uh, I ain't about to put on no show for you, nigga. I ain't no, let me cater to you, bitch. What the fuck? There's nigga, no I'm a boy, fuck. damn it. You don't get the and fuck out of here with that up. shit. Nigga, where's your girl? We gonna get our watches in. They gotta be another female in the room for this to happen. Oh yeah, she was in there. She was yeah. late by now. Oh okay, this nigga just up <laughs> smoking. <laughs> oh y'all about to? Oh all right, well all right, well since I'm here, <laughs> well go ahead then. Don't let me stop you. What y'all doing? <laughs> hey, uh, the thing is, we both know. Like me and him both know because either girl asks, "Is your roommate sleep?" And we would always reply, "No." Nah. Yeah, that nigga sleep. Nah. He just sleep like that. I'm gonna tell you what's creepier <laughs> than that. When you know you getting your watches in, 
but it's the way you're look getting looked at that <laughs> makes you feel uncomfortable in the middle of your stroke. <laughs> so that time when we was getting our watches in, and then I'm back getting it, and then I look over and I'm just like, "Why y'all? What the fuck is wrong? Is, am, I about, am I about to get Jeffrey Dahmer? Is, is this a Hannibal Lecter time? Like, what is happening? I don't understand what the the mood shifted. This don't feel Ooh. sexy no more. This feels scary. I want to call somebody. Like, hold on, is this this phone a friend? Because the friend I'm in the room with is not making me feel safe. Because uh, he is not keeping things safe. Shit? I don't know why his why is she looking at me like that. Like what? Like uh, is it something that you're doing to her? Why, but why is she looking at me? Like, I don't. What uh, is she looking at the girl like that? Because I feel like we both about to get killed. And I don't like it. Does she have the pistol? <laughs> like it was like yo, I've never yo. I'm talking about that. That's some freaking shit. When you don't feel comfortable no more, like huh? Um, huh, do I keep fucking? And, and but you already in the pussy, so it's like you looking over and you like, why is she looking at me like that? But this pussy feel good. So now I'm like torn because I don't want to leave this pussy. But I'm I want to leave this room because this is not feeling great. So now what do I do? Do I keep going or do, uh, oh god, I'm gonna get murdered for some ass. God damn it. <laughs> I'm gonna be mid-stroke, just getting stabbed well, all in the back of my neck. <laughs> this bitch to turn into the goddamn reaper all of a sudden. Like her eyes just turned into like the demon. Like, and she was just looking at me like. I'm gonna kill you both. Give me your soul, you mere mortals. Ha 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 ha. Was that and I'm just sitting there stroking, like, what are you talking about? No, time you I was there? No, it was me and, uh, no, this is me and Face. Oh, okay. I'm about to yeah, that, that, and then, yeah, and then the weirdest part that. about it is the, 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 like, literally 30 minutes after we finish, and everybody, then you know, marinated in their juices for a second. We go in the kitchen and she offers everybody breakfast and Kool-Aid. Mm -hmm. I've never seen nothing like this place. shit. But it, no, it's not bad. But it's Jeez. two times I've gotten my watches in with Faze. Right? And I've got my watches in all across the country. But this one, but these two times have been the most demonic shit ever. And it had nothing to do with Faze, <laughs> but he was there. <laughs> He was there, <laughs> but it's the way this young lady would look at me and my lady that just made me feel real uncomfortable. And it because it wasn't like a sensual, like, oh, yeah, it would start off there. Everybody would be just like, oh, yeah, everybody, she look at these juices flowing. Look at everybody. Oh, look at what they doing. Look at what we doing. And then like midway through, it would just turn to like. I want to devour your soul, you evil bitches. <laughs> like, it was it's something in her that would just shift. And the look wouldn't be cute no more. It would be like, oh, yeah, when they go to sleep, I'm going to chop their heads off. Are you talking about Henry? And I, yes. Yes. And to this <laughs> day, like, I remember, because I, I remember the second time we got our watches in, Tanisha was like, yeah, can we just uh, stop? We just watch the movie. I don't want to do this. And I was like, yeah, I feel you. I'm uncomfortable. Cause that is <laughs> like, ain't nobody else looking at each other like that in the room. Everybody else got these loving look. Everybody like, oh, that's, yeah, look at what they doing. Go, go. Oh, yeah, this is sexy. And she just. <sighs> <laughs> now, mind you. She's making noises that sound good, but the look that she's like, but she's looking at us weird and like, I, oh God, it was the most uncomfortable yeah, shit ever. Quest. No, she won't like this. The thing, her, I don't know how to explain, man, it's the scariest shit. But to this day, like I've never had an experience where me and the, the woman I was with was doing something. We left it like, did we almost die? <laughs> like usually it was like nigga you almost died or girl you almost died never have I ever had it was just like did did we almost die was that about to be our did last night together like was face about to watch us get murdered 
I don't know, cause cause he didn't look like he was gonna stop. He looked like he would have just followed that shit right on across the road. Like, well, if you're gonna stab a bit, I'ma just go ahead and get this last one more, <laughs> one more time. Now, if, now if y'all two over there can just make some happy noises, and this would really help me to finish my moment. But y'all, uh, I'm gonna so, get by. So, face bitch was the like, bitch. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. You know, he like. Oh hey, yeah. Bitch. Oh yeah, <laughs> most of them were married. Yeah, yeah, so. there was, was, was some crazy bitches. Now, mind you, I would leave mine because I felt weird about being with them, right? Because I I felt bad, like they were some good Jones. So, oh, I'm doing the wrong. Let me come. Hey, face man, should I be doing this? I, I know I just left it over there, but I, I, before I nut, is this right? <laughs> face would leave his like. Oh yeah, this bitch started spazzing in the middle of it. Like, oh, it's too like what, n- nigga? What? So what's wrong with her? I don't know, but I'm gonna go back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> like, like man, <laughs> he would test it out a few times to make sure. He wiped one of them. One crazy one got through the like. Usually he would just keep them at bay, and they just be like FWBs, you know, like. Hey, I'm gonna get the pull up. Okay, now this I can't see the bitch for another three weeks because this one right here, she gonna uh, do some weird shit. Yeah. But this one with the one strap, I remember he kept her around for a good like it was a good at least month, month and a half that she was in the rotation like as the main. And everybody was like, oh, "All right," and she was loopy as fuck, and he knew it. He would say how crazy <laughs> this bitch is. <laughs> as as he as he knocks the literal bottom out of it, like, well, you know, why is she crazy? <sighs> Give her a lobotomy. Come on, uh, come on, KISS is he talking about? Oh no, hell no. No, man. This one, this one was like this one was before all of the other mains from oh, like this was like some random. Uh, we was in a so I tell you how it happened. We was in the middle of a contest, and it was like, okay, I know it was me. It was Faith. I think Chua was involved. I think Foose got involved. I think it was Barvis. I think it was Farad. <laughs> I think I don't know. I oh no, it was the other Farad too. Scudders. I don't know if Chalk or Lloyd was involved, but I know I know at least it was the people I just named. And it was like who got the most numbers by the end of first semester, right? So this was like early in the year. Like nobody had even really done nothing. Like nobody was white. Everybody was just chilling. And this girl came out of nowhere. And he still was doing his thing, but this girl was like nuts. So like <clears throat> But he kind of, uh, he like low key wifed her, but she was cool with him, like still doing his thing. Like it was weird, but she was nuts, nuts. Like he didn't care. He'd be complaining why he was in the guts. Like you crazy ass bitch. What the fuck wrong with you? Did oh, name get this nut like off that? real quick. Oh, I don't know. I don't know Probably. the name. I just know her. I just know her as one strap because she had like 30 shirts of different colors and designs, and they all had just like one Tarzan strap. She lived oh, in Whitehurst. Because right? it, it was still warm outside. She stayed in Whitehurst. I don't know. She was thick. And short. What? All of them were thick. Wait, all your Joe's short, nigga. You short. <laughs> you got like you had a bunch of giant Amazon bitches. Like you had a bunch of. Oh yeah, she played for the basketball team. No, nigga. the fuck. You had all the little gymnasts, and shit, little see, dance, little, short. little, little tight, com- compact, compact, thick bitches. <laughs> 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 you know they damn near midgets, but they ain't quite. They like they like right above the legal height to be midgets. Or little people. I'm sorry. I'm I'm, I'm faded. I'm uh, yeah. They are little pocket pussies. All of them. They just different thicknesses. They either slim thick or big thick or whatever. But they all just little. I like them little shallow pussy bitch. Not gonna buy them. Not doing that bitch. 
<laughs> you know, them little shallow bitches where the back of your dick be just out there, all like it's like you're in the back of the shower. <laughs> like, well, I don't get none, huh? It's just cold back here, huh? Uh, just all right, tip. I just that's all you got. Just all I'm getting tonight, huh? All right. uh, uh, let me put my hand right here so I can at least get some warm. Hey, girl, hold this because it's mm -hmm. cold. The front all nice and juicy. Like, can you squirt some back here or something? Like, can you share? Because, bitch, oh yeah, open your cervix up then. Let know. me get let me get some extra room. Can I get the? Can I get just three more inches, please? Two, two, two one, one. Just let me Damn get this. <laughs> Don't let you put the legs back. Now you literally just tipping it. And she, ah, 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 and you sitting there, man. It now oh. become the partners after dark. <laughs> I've been trying to get, I, I just want to get a little bit. Can, three centimeters? Can you open up, bitch? Okay. For all y'all out there that want really short girls, if you like the five, four, and down, five, five, and down, look, look, let me tell you something. If you ever like, like the only way you're gonna get even like two thirds or three fourths in is if she happens to get on top and you like bend your legs up so that like you can push some of yours inside of you. Like you gotta remove some of the inches to like make it equitable. It is like a certain it's like this one position oh. where you can kind of get a couple of your inches up inside. Man, yeah, I don't. I don't know how else to say this shit right now, okay? Scientifically, that's what's happening at the moment. Damn it. <laughs> it's like a it's like it's like you retracted your claws Man, just you a little bit as Wolverine. Say that. Like so like Wolf I, we don't got the button. We don't got the button. Shut up, bitches. <laughs> Fuck y'all. We ain't got the button, it don't count. Um <laughs> I'm not right there, you know, like I can't, you know. <laughs> I don't got the, the buttons. Hey look, hey look, hey look. So this is what I mean. I'm, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put it in comic. I'm gonna put it in comic book terms, and y'all gonna understand what I'm saying. And we're gonna keep it moving, okay? Oh God, you, put you know how Wolverine got Wolverine got six inch claws, right? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the general rule, like average, depending on the comic book. All right, now he can retract his claws however long he needs them, though. To depending on like the foe he's facing. If he if he facing somebody that ain't got no thick ass armor, he don't really need to pull the holes in. He might just throw two inches and yeah. slice them to fucking shreds. If he needs yeah. like some thick, cause he got so he going through a sentinel or something, he might pull out the whole six inch claw. So what I'm saying is, there's certain positions that you can retract parts of your claws depending on how your body is contorted. And what I'm saying is there's a position where the woman's on top where if your legs are up a little bit in a certain way, certain parts of your claws retract and you don't have as much. So then instead of like you having like, you the know, Amazon? two to four inches, out, instead of having two to four, no, no, nigga, what? Nigga, what the fuck is you talking about? <laughs> Never mind, yo, I quit. I'm done. I'm done talking for these. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh God, man. Oh man, and that was our black business of the week. <laughs> Slanging dicks is 1983, bitch. Oh, man, I quit, yo. Y'all stupid as fuck for that, man. I, what I was trying to, man, I don't even know what I was trying to say no more. I don't forgot what I was talking about. This nigga to fuck my whole train of thought up, like everything. You, 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 know. were, try, you were trying to describe and, and, and inform us how you could retract penis into yourself. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, y'all act like I'm stupid. All right, I'm tripping. I'm anatomically different from every other man in the world. I got you. I got you. I got you. Understood. We're going to act like I'm stupid. All right. We're going to act like we can't have real talk. All right. Fuck. I forgot what podcast I'm on. Maybe I need to go to Joe Button and them. They would be saying. Shit. Nigga. Queen Flip would be right with me. Like, yeah, nigga, I feel you. I don't know what the name of the... It ain't got no name because it ain't like... It's like the girl just riding you. Your legs be like... Like the girl is on top of you, and instead of your legs being out and laid out straight or or like laid down on the bed, you like bent your knees up some, 
and with that, you lose like an inch of cock. I don't know why it happens, but it does. And until you extend your pelvis again, you don't get the inch back. So that's why when you go up into her, she'd be like, oh, oh, because it'd be like, oh, I, oh, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. You know? Oh, but y'all act like I don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all act like y'all ain't niggas that ever fuck. Y'all ain't y'all ain't ever had no. But I'm, I'm talking to virgins, y'all. Welcome to the Virgin Podcast. We got uh, this is this is the Holy Mary Immaculate Podcast of the Catholic Church. Um, we are all chaste and pure. We've never we've never experienced the pleasures of the ambrosia salad. Uh, we don't know what I'm talking about. No, this is niggas in the ambrosia salad. The fuck out of here, man! <laughs> I'm dealing with two goddamn popes or some nigga. Y'all ain't no goddamn priests. Y'all ain't no monks, nigga. I know y'all niggas. We talking about the niggas that man. What the fuck we talking about here, man? Like really, what we doing, yo? Why y'all trying to play me to the left? Like what the fuck I'm talking about? What the fuck? What, what we doing, nigga? We know the science of fucking. I know every position to get the maximum inches out of my shit or the minimum, depending on what I need and the girl I'm with and what she going to handle and whether or not how much she going to allow me to push the boundaries. Uh, like, come on, man. What are we talking about here, man? I ain't dealing with no niggas that don't fuck once. We out here, nigga. We used to belong to the streets. We ain't all streets. like, nigga, you all the fuck, nigga. Niggas ain't always been us now. You're talking about us at ODU, nigga. I, like, we live the life, nigga. I ain't about to, like, nigga, fuck out of here. Technically, nigga. I'm still in the streets. Man. Do me like this shit, man. What the fuck wrong with y'all, man? Doing me like this shit here, man. Nigga, acting like I'm crazy. Don't be, nigga, don't be crying. Stop acting like I'm crazy. Fuck all this crying shit. Nigga, stop acting like I'm crazy. You know what I'm talking about? You was there. You were with me. I literally just told a story about us getting our watches in. That won't just me. Bitch, I looked over. It was you and your bitch. Now, I might have to edit all this part out, but God damn it, I might have to edit everything after the good and fuck her out, but damn it, I mean, after your topic out, but damn it, we going with it. Top five might have just ended everything, and that might just, that might be a separate thing we might have to release on Buy Me A Coffee or something. You just got to pay for that one. I don't know, but yeah. one of them jokes where we, where we gated with the 18 and up, because there's a lot of shit going on, but Nigga, we gonna have, we ain't about to do this, man. What we ain't about to do in year three is have no fake conversation. I'm not doing that. I I'm free to talk. I can say whatever the fuck I want to say, and I ain't about to be lying. Now we are gonna bring up a conversation. We are gonna talk about it, or we ain't gonna bring it up. Then, nigga, we just talk about some goddamn. We go back to talk about Uma. <laughs> 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 but talk about, them, talk about them busted windows at the band though. God damn it. But uh what we ain't about to do is have no faith. I can't I can't lie. I don't know how to. I'm a Capricorn. I mean nigga. It's Ted. <laughs> I will tell you the truth to get myself in trouble. Like, well, god damn it, I guess I did do it. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. You act like we won't ratchet as fuck as goddamn uh early in our early uh in our late teens, early twenties. From seventeen, no, 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 no. I I digress. We go back to 15, 16. Now I now we started doing some other shit close to eleven. But everything else after eleven ramped up about 14, 15. Nigga, high school shit got real about sophomore junior year, and it never slowed down after that. It just kept going up and up and up and up and up. I remember graduation night, bitch. And then there were Corey and McCoy getting my watches in. Corey mad as a bitch because he ain't getting no pussy. Oh, nigga, what? Me, Kenny, I and Corey up in there. Me, Kenny, and Corey up in there. We been stroking. I Damn, have so I many stories. Hey! That nigga in there in just grumpy. We, yo, time niggas time. had to literally send him to the to the other room. Like, hey, just go to the yeah. other room, bro. Yeah. Because you were ruining the whole vibe. Everybody trying to just enjoy their night, and you were just a party pooper. Like, get your gr troll under the bridge ass 
on next door. And luckily, oh, Kenny man. paid for the room, so uh, it was easy for him to tell him to go. Yeah. <clears throat> she was in there. <laughs> yeah, we was in there getting it. So I, I know where we come from, so don't... But I'll tell you what, y'all ain't about to ever front on me on this podcast, <laughs> nigga. I, I got the files. Y'all lucky. Y'all lucky. Y'all so lucky social media want a thing. Nigga, we would have been them goddamn bros. We would have been on every TikTok out there just, this nigga is crazy. What is they doing? What they doing? What they doing today? Oh, Lord. They out there. Nigga, we would have had a TikTok. Y'all remember the videotape? Y'all remember the camcorder? If that oh, tape yeah. ever leaked, if that tape ever leaked, we are fucked. Mm. Canceled to the highest order. Oh, On man. so many levels. And I ain't even talking about saying, I'm just talking about just regular everyday life cancel. Just like, what the fuck are these niggas talking about? Did he say that? Did he do that? Oh, shit. Why did he do that? Oh, God. They did, did they that. Just dis- oh. Did they just destroy somebody's bicep? Yeah. We just took that shit apart. Yeah. I'm sorry, y'all, for that. I don't know why that went off. Um, <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't have any, I don't have anywhere else to be, so I don't even know why that went off. But uh, God bless. I don't want to hear that sound. Actually, I do have one place to be. If y'all could go ahead and continue the conversation for just a brief moment. No problem at all. <clears throat> so, okay. like. So, like, when I was in Miami, right, I'm walking, mm-hmm. uh, me and Lily were walking somewhere or whatever to take pictures and whatnot. And then this uh, this foreign lady was driving past, with that, you know, riding her bike past us in this uh, group of white people in front of us. And she told me, uh, excuse me, please, can you move? I don't want to accident you. And I said, you know what? I'm using that. I'm using that phrase for the rest of my life. I don't want to accident you. <laughs> I don't want to. Please, please, move the fuck out of my way. I don't want to accident you. <laughs> I fuck with it. I fuck with it, too. I, 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 I can fuck with it. Yeah, I don't want to accident you. The white people in front of us laugh, so I, I think they fuck with it, too. I fuck with it. Please, please move the fuck out of the way. I don't want to accident you. No, yeah, I, no. I don't want to get accident. <clears throat> I don't want you to accident me either. Right, anyway, bitch. Bitch. I agree. That's bad grammar, but right intention. <laughs> uh, go. Hell no. Nah. Mm-hmm. Like, I've been having this bike. fucking problem with my fucking car, with my truck and shit. What was that? Like, they got that like when I get it started, it it runs. I don't got no problem, but it's like the um like the battery is not pushing the electricity to the car to start it. So I gotta check like, the take alternator. The alternator, fine. It's like when I <clears throat> all I do is deactivate the uh like disconnect the uh terminals from the battery. Mm-hmm. Wait like 10, 15 minutes, and then it'll kick on. What the like, fuck are y'all talking like, about? Hmm? Yeah, are you are your terminals loose or do you have to actually un, unscrew them to get them off your um the um they're loose? Uh, and the I'm talking about car off, shit. Off, yeah, are yeah. the cables loose on the terminals? It's the the actual connection, the terminal connection that you connect to the battery itself. They're like, oh um, yeah, y'all gonna make me do some work on this week's podcast. I see. Okay, I got y'all. Word up. <laughs> I know. I, I, <laughs> they go ahead and actually yeah. edit this week for real, for real. Like I went to actually do some work, work. It' gonna no, be I, just a couple I, of pauses. It's, it's gonna be some. Uh, okay, I got you. I got you. All right. Yeah. Thought I was. I thought y'all was gonna keep the vibe going from what we was talking about. No, y'all niggas with this goddamn nigga. How, what's wrong with my car? Can you help me? Just be old niggas. That's all. Just be old. I told him about my new phrase. I got a new phrase, Tiz. Brought to. Him. Brought to me by this um, foreign bicycler at, in Miami. Uh, it was a walk with Lily. It was a group in front of us, and then she was riding past with her bike. And <laughs> she was like, "Please, please move! I don't want to accident you." So I'm using that phrase for the rest of my life. Nigga, what that got to do with your goddamn car? <laughs> 
I don't know. We just got into it. And I did. I just started talking about my car. You know, I got ADHD. So sometimes he just. Yeah. Oh God, this nigga just. <laughs> hey, so you got the advice from a battery? You know, I've uh, been struggling with that over the past week. You know, you got it. So what? So what about hooking up here? You said the, the terminal to the terminal. Okay, gotcha. The positive to the negative, the negative to the positive. All right. <laughs> God, they complete the circuit. Okay. With yeah, the red yeah, to the green and the green, green to the black. Conversation. You know, yeah, we'll get the out fuck here. out of here. And that was our well, Pod Squad. Squad. If y'all want more car talk, I mean, we can get Pat and uh, face together and let them talk it because uh, I know the basics. we talking oil and tires. You go past that, yeah, I, know I know how to go. To, I know exactly where to take it to get it fixed. But I'm not I willing to, to pay somebody here. exactly one time to fix it. I can change my headlights my and all that. shit. But I ain't about to be mm-hmm. dropping no carburetors and dropping a new <clears throat> engine and nothing. And they acting like I know how to, you know, remove you know a piston. You, you and know and what I'm that Man, I will fuck my car up. You understand yeah. me? I won't drive nowhere. That shit will be on yeah, blocks, yeah. on cinder blocks, fucking with me. No, so I know how to. T- if, if my tire yeah, fuck cool. up, I can change it. If my oil really need changing and I can't get to nobody, I can do it. If uh, you get past that, we're talking very minor shit. Like I can, you know, obviously I can fix headlights and taillights. I can, you know, change a spark plug. Uh, but you get past that, man. No, I'm paying somebody to do that shit. I ain't about to be twisting no no tubes and wires and then some shit be spraying out of my car. Or it was leaking and it won't leaking before I touched it. No, I'm good. Hey, sir. <laughs> You went to school. You hey, this is what you do. I know how to give somebody else. Siri, if you don't turn off, <clears throat> yo, can I just say I hate Siri? Sir, hey Siri, turn off. No, nigga, I will not turn off. There's nothing to stop here. Check if the device is on your home Wi-Fi. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Samson. I want to talk to Samson. Fly me to the moon like the bitch out of Scrambling. Because it's hard being black and gifted. I just, just want to throw it all down and get lifted. <laughs> oh, man. Dave Chappelle is best. But, um, mm-hmm. all right. If you've stuck with us to this point, God bless your heart. I don't know how you've done mm-hmm. it. It's going to be a lot of edits. So you, I don't know what this is going to sound like right before this moment. But well, let me just tell you, at this moment, I left that pregnant pause there so when I'm looking at the metadata, I can actually see where I'm supposed to stop at to cut. Um, but at this moment, we are now transitioning. Uh, we've, we have about talked ourselves out for the evening. Uh, some things you probably wanted to hear, some things you probably didn't, and some things you probably will never hear because I'm going to cut them the hell out. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Do we have a black business this week, Bobby? Guys? Anybody got one? No. Well, then as always, support your favorite. Oh, go ahead. What you got, Pat? Don't say maybe. No, Just go I'm ahead say it. what you got to say. Well, then shit, support your favorite black business then. The partners. If you want to give us money, go to dollar sign, go to cash app, dollar sign, partner, tiers one. That's cash app, dollar sign, partner, tiers one. That's P-O-D-N-A-T-I-Z-1. Or you can go to buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners. That's buymeacoffee.com backslash T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. Now, you can donate it on both of those for as little as a dollar. You can also subscribe for a monthly membership on buy me a coffee for as little as four ninety nine. You can also go to Spotify and or Anchor FM backslash T H E hyphen Podnas, and you can sign up for a monthly membership there, which highly supports the podcast. From there, if you want to give us money, but you want to get some shit back in return, you want some back for your money. Hey, you give us money, and then you get something tangible in your hands. Not just the love of the podcast and the great conversation and the enjoyable time you have with us every week. 
But no, you want something back. Like you want to be able to wear some, do some, hold some, touch some, pause, face. How can they do that? Well, if he's not here, I'll tell you. You can go to rtrayclothing.com. That's rtrayclothing.com. rtrayclothing.com. It's your official. Yes, it's your official one-stop shop for all AC83 merchandise and all the Podnas merchandise. It's the uh, only place you can get your Podnas merch. Yes, it's the only place you can get your Podnas merchandise, your Pod Squad merch. It's the only place you can get your AC83 gear. So please make sure you go there place. and get all of your stuff. Yes, yes, yes. And what Once is the again, name of that website? How can they get their face? By going to the goddamn store. But if you type it in, it's rtrayclothing.com. R Trey Clothing. A R T R E Clothing. Won't be spelled by me. Dot com. Go to the damn store. It'll never be spelled by this podcast. We spelled it twice ever. And Faith said we'll never do it again. So we're going to respect that. So you should be smart enough to spell clothing if you're listening to this podcast. If not, subscribe anyway. But just know some shit will go over your head. Now, go to the as we end out, man. Go. Yes, please do. Please do. And after you go to the store, if you want to send us pics, if you want to ask us questions, if you want to send us topics, if you just want to communicate with us, Faith, I mean, Pat, how can they do that, Pat? At sign T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. That is the TikTok. That is the Twitter. That is the Instagram. That's the Twitch. And on Facebook, Tiz, Face, Pat, are the partners. Yeah, it's too many damn P's. We just pushing P2A too damn hard on this podcast. Um, but um, podcast. that's been the podcast, guys. As always, man, this has been the partners. You've been the part of the pod squad. Thank you for joining us. I've been one third of the partners. My <clears throat> name is Tiz. I've been along with. It's the other. The Padawan here. Hey, and I've been along with. Face, damn it. Damn it, his face. Hey, man. We appreciate y'all for joining us. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you were here with us. And I love y'all, man. Thank y'all for joining us tonight. We've had a great time. I hope you have as well. I don't, again, know exactly what this show will look like to you when you listen to a pod squad or you watch it. But I hope that you enjoy it. And I hope that you join us in the comments below on whatever platform you listen on so that we can join you in this conversation. Please join our conversation. Please do. And as always, again, we've been the partners. Peace, bitches! That sounds real crazy without the voice on. But we'll see y'all next do, week. man, but I'm about to go get it. Holla back. Oh. That Peace, was the one, two, one. <laughs>